All right, hello, you're up. We're only taking a few calls today. We have a, we have a new, oh, God, we'll take a call or two, then we'll talk about our newest advertiser. But hello, good morning. You're on the Kirk Minahan Show. More, Michael Geary and more Steve like the Robinson. More like cream at 11.15. Kirk's coming back to radio, baby. Let's go. Yeah, I'll handle it. I'll handle the name myself. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> well, I guess this is probably a really bad time to ask Steve about hyperinflation, huh? All right, we're done. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, this is going to be a stress-free environment. Kirk, What's up? What's up? It's KB. Hey, KB, how you doing? You ready for the trivia tomorrow? Not bad. How's it going? Well, I guess you, I guess uh, you have, to, to, I guess you have I tomorrow to off. That, yeah. I'm sorry, I wanted, to, I wanted to tell you on the show that uh, I'm not going to be in New York either. Oh, oh, landscaping? Laboring, laboring. Laboring. I'm sorry. Jesus, I always do it's that. It's hard to keep up with them. I always do that. KB, you're, when you're down yeah, on I'm, South Shore, will you be listening to my, me on 99.1? Um. I got the radio on here. All the boys Good. are listening, so I like that. Waiting Good. for you. Good, I like that. Keep you have to wait a few years. But yeah, I won't be able to be in New York for the trivia contest. I have to do it remote. Why is that? Just too busy down here. You know, it's too busy. Sure, 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 sure. What's new in the? Do you have? Uh, let me ask you this because I've been suffering from this. I can't imagine being in laboring. Is the is the allergies been bothering you? Is there anything you're taking for the pollen, or, or are you okay? I've actually uh, never had a problem with the allergies. Oh, good. That's Thank good. Thank God, you know. Yeah, no, you praise. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> it's good. What else is new with you? Yeah, but not much. I mean, me, Frank, and Nick have been talking about our new our niche categories. Sure. Such as? We're we're doing our dirt bikes yeah. and the mechanics of it. Right. Dirt bikes and, and the mechanics of, of it. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. History of laboring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Has that come up yet in any of your questions? It feels like a wide... It feels like a long, long also history. potentially problematic, but okay, go ahead. I think we're going to be good, you know? No, we're I think we're going to win it all, so we might you, as well... Look, you're the number one seed. You're the team to beat. We're number two. I mean, we could we could be meeting in the finals. I think we're going to win it all. I think hopefully we face you in the finals. I think it will be close, but I think we're going to take it. Okay. Well, I wish we're you luck, Avery. confident in ourselves. I wish you luck. I wish you luck, my friend. I just want to tell you one more thing. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Thing? Sure, wanna, of course you can. I want you to hear this. So the other day, oh, uh-huh. I was on my website trying to log in, and I couldn't remember the password. And the computer asked me if I'm a robot. Right. I've seen How's this. the computer going to ask me if I'm a robot? Good question. Yeah, I, 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 I heard this the other day. Yes, I heard you say this the other day, KB. Yes, thank you. Are you playing his greatest test from the yak with us? <laughs> All, right, KB. All right, go ahead, please. I'm sorry, caller. Continue. If 99.1 reaches out today and say, hey, Kirk, we want you to start today. You, you just have a new contract with Barstool. Would you leave Barstool? Well, I can't. I, no, radio? no, no. I'd be loyal. No, no, Barstool's been great to me. I've been loyal to them. I, you know, maybe I do a Saturday shift. Just kind of begin, you know, humble. That's where I started. A lot of know? the guys do that in regular radio, you know? Correct. You know, yeah. be humble. That's where I began my career on the weekends. Maybe I start over and work my way up there. It sounds like Zah, by the way, this color. Is it Zah? I'm sure it's not, but uh, no. it sounds a lot like it. It's, it's not, no. It's, okay. it's not, no. And another question, of, uh, but the case, um, if you have, I know you have a lot of material. Do you have so much material that it could go more than eight episodes? Or we def- is it be we definitely do. I, I hope we don't go more than eight episodes, but I mean, there's a chance. I guess there's always a chance, but like, I don't think it would be, that next Monday wouldn't be week nine. It, it would pop up at some other time. And any possibility that season two could be a continuation of this case? It's possible. We just don't know yet. It's possible. I'd, I'd be surprised, but it's it's possible. Cool. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. I don't care how your day goes, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Hello. Kirk. Yeah? I'm calling out of Atlanta. Just had a tornado touchdown two miles away. Oof. Uh, moved. I'm in the closet right now, sort of like Carano, uh-huh. but uh, uh-huh. just wanted my last call to be to you and tell you I love you. Why is that funny? <laughs> I don't know. It's funny that he planned that. He clearly planned that. He thinks that's going to land. It's funny that he said that was in my head, too. It did. <laughs> just such a... Just I mean, such a, such a weather, I'm not joking, childish. but... Uh, What's that? It's childish. It is. <laughs> What's that, buddy? I'm sorry. I said, you can check the weather, but uh, I'm just trying to hang on for this next episode of the case, man. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. It's a good one. It's the longest one yet, I believe. All right. Oh, definitely, yeah. Steve, once man, again, I, was I, like, I, it's I, not going to be I, long. I, we I, do this I, every I, time. I, every time, Steve's like, I think it's going to be like 20 minutes. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> every time, Steve. I think it'd be great if you, like, because you kind of, it seems like you've tried to keep the at least the first couple a little shorter. Yeah. If you get to episode eight and you're like, ah, fuck, we have like nine hours of shit to <laughs> cram in. drop it all in. <laughs> Could happen. What are you typing away furiously about? Uh, just promo stuff for the case. Okay. Good. Thank- what was that, pal? Anything else? 
No, just wanted to make my last call to you if I die. Okay, died. man. Well, hang on to speed, brother. All right. Good luck. If a tornado already touched Hello? down two miles away, I don't think he's going to die. You never know. He could die. He could get hit by a bus. That's true. Life Tomorrow's is... promise to no one. Exactly. That's true. Hello. Hello. Yes. Clark? Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, uh, I always enjoy, I always enjoy the pop culture stuff when you bring it up because it gets me thinking about things. Well, anytime I get a chance, and, any chance uh, I get, time I get a chance to get that, that brain of yours moving, that's what I want to do. I'm here to encourage that. Go ahead. There we're you here, go. We're here to help people think. But you, uh, you did the greatest cast for a movie. Yeah, on somebody Friday. called about that, which I like. And it got me thinking because you, you, I mean, you pulled up a great movie. I mean, an, almost an unbeatable movie. But I think I may have got it beaten. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious not only if I beat it, but how long, naming the actors, how long it will take you to actually understand which movie well, I'm using. Well, go ahead. Well, you said you would go with Al Pacino number one. In Glen Gary, Glen Ross? So I have to go. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. yep. Go ahead. Uh-huh. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to counter yep. with Gene Hackman. My favorite actor ever. Yeah, I, I know. That's why I went there. Okay. And then you said Ed Harris. Uh-huh. I'm going to go Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. And who's your next actor? Are you going to go with Redford next? Who are you going to go with? Hopkins? Who are you going with? Yeah, I, I literally don't understand your brain. A bridge I don't too, understand a, how a you A bridge too that. far. A great war film. Well, not a great war film, but you know what? The movie, it's written by one my favorite writer, William Goldman, wrote it. Um, wrote the yeah, script. Yeah, uh, And I think Richard Attenborough directed it, or am I wrong? Yeah, uh, yes, he 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 uh, directed. And he actually he gave himself a small. He's in role it too. In it yeah, also. he's in it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those ones where they it should be better than it is. But remember, remember Hackman. I, mean, I love the movie. Hackman, Hackman, remember Hackman and Redford worked together as well in Downhill Racer. That's why yeah. I was yeah. Um, I just uh, yeah. I mean, Gene, I, Gene, I could I could when Gene when and I hope it doesn't happen soon when Gene Hackman ultimately goes. He's ninety one now. I'm gonna, everyone be Gene, ready. Cause I'm, do, I'm doing the show. We're doing the whole show on Gene Hackman. Just Gene Hackman. Not me. Steve is going to talk about what Gene Hackman is meant to him. <laughs> that's over entertaining. The years. Which 90s film do you. What, what are we going to get from you? Because what weird. Steve's always got something. A uh, Hoosiers talk. Enemy of the State? What is it going to. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. The Birdcage? Uh, that's probably. The, uh, no, not Birdcage. <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah, Enemy, Enemy of the State. That's the one with Will Smith, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, it's going to be another one. Well, I mean, the it's going to be a tough hour, Superman folks. <laughs> He's he's a great he's a great Lex Luthor. Yeah, Gene Hackman is. I, 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 let, me, oh, let me just tell you one quick Gene Hackman story, if you don't mind. Barbara Hershey, who plays the uh, annoying love interest in Hoosiers, and uh, Morgan Freeman, who's in Unforgiven, both said the only time in their careers they forgot they were acting is in scenes with Gene Hackman. Really? Yes, that's true. Pretty good. All right, I'll tell you this. This is the movie that I was thinking of. Uh, exactly. I had to Google it. It's The Replacements. Perfect. <laughs> 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 the That's what <laughs> Keanu. Yeah, it's a great Gene Hackman performance. <laughs> Probably his best. Probably the one I think of the most. And, oh, no, and Behind Enemy Lines. I, did, I thought it was going to take you three actors. I thought it would take you the third actor. I can't believe you got it on. Well, that's what I'm here for, buddy. Who, could forget, rare him mind. who right. could forget him and welcome to Mooseport? Well, thank, it's his last movie, too. It's thank you very much for taking the phone call. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> Kent, how we doing? Hello. What's up? Hello. Uh, so I, I got I to gotta say, after listening to that uh, near suicidal Jared Carabas on Friday, Oof. I think it's the chair. I, I, think it's, I think it's that chair. <laughs> no, I've been better. Listening to Carabas makes me feel better. I, I, Mike, you've been, you've, been, you've been good, bud. I know. But whatever the hell you know, permeates that office yeah. in that area. I mean, Jared sounded like he was going to go like, walk off the top of the crew. After after he left, he's like he literally said, "I don't want to do anything." He said he doesn't like walking. Like, he did say his heart's a statement not someone would make. Yeah, he says his heart's. He just cares about baseball. Yeah. That's all. Do we need to perform an exorcism on that chair? That's who comes in. Yeah. He, Ironically, he, he, again, we go back to movies. I almost feel like uh, he needs almost to be like Kevin Costner in Field of Dreams. You know, he needs to do something like that. Yeah. Build a field. Go find James Earl Jones. Kidnap right. him. Drive him around. Something. Did you see? <laughs> Thanks for the call. Yeah, I, I, we love Jared. He'll be fine. Five one eight, you're up. Hello. Question. Question for Steve: Was K. Marco's interview removed from the uh, feed for Spotify on the Kirkman Hand Show? Uh, I didn't remove it, but what? Spotify can, taking everything check, down. Didn't check that. Which episode is that? Like, do you know when it is? 
It was in the summer sometime. I don't. I don't remember which That's episode true. it was. That, I, I, it could be on me, but I believe it's more on K. Marco, obviously. So I think he had something to do with it. Oh, I'd like to see if that's true. Is it, we'll see if it's true on Apple, too. I don't know. I was going to say, it wouldn't be just for Spotify if it was Barstool, though. Oh, we'll look that up. We'll take a look at that. It's interesting. All right. Hello. Last one. This guy's going to be really funny. Hey, um, for that last card, it was on Sirius, not on the podcast. That's why I can't find it. Oh, um, he's right. That, oh, that, good that point. Be, yeah, I that's know right. That. That's right. I know that because I go back and I'm addicted to you morons and uh, listen to old episodes when it went down three days a week. And a when you guys do that. Off, just listen to old ones. Yeah. And on that note. Um, well, I will be I on. Let me, hey, well, 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 let me make an announcement here. I will be on five days a week <laughs> starting in September 2024 <laughs> on 99.1 <laughs> in Plymouth. It's very exciting. Monday. I got hard five. and now i um, depressed. Wait, what? You're depressed I'll be on the radio five days a week in 2024? That's good virility. Well, I- until 2024, you <laughs> get five days a week again. Well, fine. I'm being an asshole about it. Um, in old episodes, it's Steve was right. The Canarado episode, which is must listen for anybody who hasn't, you almost bet him a million dollars that we would be in Canarado in 2021. Um, are you going to cut the check, or is it? Well, you said almost. Yeah, almost. Well, I'll be a, a payment almost bucks. <laughs> you know? No. Fair, fair. Chump um, change. Anyway. And then the Wilbur. No. Um you, you, remember, you remember Steve, Steve said Steve said at the beginning Steve took like COVID bows. At the beginning he was like eighty percent of the population is going to die. Twelve from million. It. Yeah, Americans yeah. I mean, he's not even close. I don't think that's what I said. Before, yeah. <laughs> he, but am I yeah. right, Mike? He's yes. alarmist like you wouldn't yeah, believe yeah, yeah, at the yeah. beginning. I think he said eighty percent of the population was going to get infected by it. Yeah, that's why he stuck himself with that. I don't, know, I don't know specifically what I said, but I was more accurate than either of you two bozos. I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like you were really off. I said about two weeks we'll be done with this. And don't call me. Don't call me. I'm your boss. Don't call me a fucking bozo ever again. You understand me? I, I, I take offense to that. Okay. Go ahead. What's your second point? Um, you guaranteed that we'd solve the garden. Is that still going to happen? Or if we're, if we're leaving in 2024, are we just punting no. on this whole thing? It'll be a 99.1 one of those music concerts they do. Like Kiss One Away. We'll have a bunch <laughs> of different easy yeah, listening yeah, yeah. bands, and we'll do a show from there. You'll yeah. introduce them. Yeah, that's right. Can't wait to be there. Can't wait to have you there. Goodbye. Hello. Yeah. I have a question from Blind Mike. You should ask him. He's right here. Please. This is your chance to talk to him. There's no other way you can Perfect. ever chance to talk to him in any other format. No, ever. certainly no not. No place where he's begging for you to talk. I to never him. take calls and don't get any with the number up <laughs> during the show. We've talked about this before. That room is, it, you, 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 people get stuffed in when they're right, trying to make call. It's just a narrow, narrow pipe. Exactly. Line. Yes. Yeah. $1 T are available now. Oh, there you go. Blind Mike. Uh, well, this has been, yeah. been bugging me for a while, but. Months ago, Blind Mike said that Alba caught him masturbating, and he said he wore a toga when he jerks off. Is this true? Uh, no. Well, in a sense, I guess you could say. <laughs> what? But it's his jerking toga. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, I take a uh, an old sheet that is not used oh, yeah, for bed yeah, purposes. That's not unusual. So it's similar, but not an actual. You, you should you should go Julius all Caesar. Toga. You should go all in. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll all do right. that at the live show if you ask right. me to. I think that's I think that's all we can do with these calls <laughs> at this point. Hello, Parody Shop and Safe. I could talk to Stacy, please. Sure, just a moment. Thank you. Hello, Stacy. It's Kirk Minahan. Well, hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Good. I wanted you to know that we are coming back up June twelfth. Really? Yes. We sound that you say that like you're you're you seem uh, uh, suspicious or something. No, uh, just a little surprise. <laughs> why? Why is that? <laughs> well, I don't know. What are you surprised about? We, we, we said we'd be back, and now we're coming back. Yeah, yeah. June twelfth. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, my son's graduating. The that's year. what that's what Kim just told us at uh, at, uh, at Rick's. That's high school graduation. Yeah. The, well, the eleventh. Yeah. So the graduation 11th. weekend. What's he? Uh, what's he doing next year? My son is taking off. He's going to school at uh, UMaine in Orono. That's nice. That's uh, good. He's going to be studying chemical engineer. Oh wow! Look at him. Jeez. Yeah. How's uh? Yep. How's your husband doing with the with the border being closed and everything? And all, there's all construction on this uh, bridge too. Is that right? Yeah, they're going to be starting the project. I'm not sure when, but they're getting a new bridge, a new port of entry, and the whole shebang there. Huh? How's he doing? Um, he's good. Good. I'm still bored. Still bored over at work. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do all day if you have that job and there's and it's not, the border's not open? Yeah, he doesn't do too much. No. I mean, they have a little bit coming through because, like, there's still some people that are essential workers that oh, are sure. right, 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 work right. on this side, especially, like, at the paper mill. I mean, they do still have some traffic, right. but it's not at all. 
<laughs> not yeah. even a quarter of what they had before. Yeah. Okay. Huh. And so, getting... what, what's your plans on June 12? What, what are you guys coming to do? Well, uh, well, our intern Justin is putting it all together. Steve and I have been working on this show. We have another show working on right now, so we've been kind of busy. Yeah, I mean, I catch I catch your podcast once in a while. I know you started a new one there, the yeah. case or yeah, something. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. I haven't had a chance. Yeah. You'll, I think you like <laughs> I, had, I do want to listen to it. I think you like. I do want to listen to it when I have a chance. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Whenever you have a chance. So yeah. So we're doing that. So. Uh, June eleventh, that Friday, the gra- I guess when the graduation is happening, we're doing something at Rick's, and then Saturday we're we're doing something. Uh, just to figure out the physical location, but we're going to be in the area sort of all weekend. So if we can run into you at some oh. point, it sounds like you'll be busy. But if we see you at some point, that would be good. Well, I'm not going to be working Friday. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, no, so my fans won't be able to come visit. <laughs> oh no, you or Saturday probably. No, right? no, I'm not. I'm taking the weekend off. My son's graduating. <laughs> There were people I drove by last year when I, we we did the live show in uh, uh, Lakeview, and there were people. I actually yeah. went into the supermarket. I wanted to go in. You weren't working. Yeah, I, it was my first time. I went yeah. in there that Saturday, and there were people yeah. inside just taking pictures of the supermarket. They yeah, were, this is where Stacy works. Well, just ran the people. That, to take well, that day, out. the day of the storm, Friday, like right. we had so much people coming in, like, and it was really slow because of the storm. But yeah. we had. We were still, we still had some action because people were coming in to there you take go. pictures with me. There you go. There but yeah, go. unfortunately, I won't be working on the 11th. So oh, I well. want to take the day off. Okay. Well, yeah, you should. Well, congratulations to your son. Hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you between now and then. Hopefully, we'll figure out a way to meet up uh, with, with everyone that weekend. Okay. All right. Hang in there, Stacy. You guys are good? Yeah, hey, everybody's good. doing good? Everyone's doing fine. Thank you. Yep, yep. Steve, yeah. Steve's doing okay. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Mike's doing okay. Yeah, we're all hanging in. We're looking forward. To, I, I'm looking. It'll be nice to go up there when the when the weather's like. Oh, I should ask you. So, give me a couple of things that we should do up there when the weather's nice in that area. What are a couple of things we should do? Oh gosh, um, I don't know. <laughs> what do you do? Well, what, 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 like, you know, yeah, just for, you know. I run. I, I know you. I know you're a runner, and I'm a runner. So, oh, man. we have that in common. Oh. I've been wanting to tell you that. Oh, where do you, where do you go? <laughs> where do you go for your runs? Um, out in well. I call it out in St. David, but like right on Route One. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. When yeah. you when you get to Madawaska, I run at, I run there because that's where I live. So. Oh, okay. Do you run yeah. by yourself in the group? Yeah. I can't run with people. I, I don't, don't by I, myself. That's good. Yeah, I'm the by same myself guy. early morning. Good. Same. Same. Four thirty in the morning usually. Wow, that's <laughs> impressive. But then, but you feel good because you get it done. You know. Oh, it's awesome. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll see you, and, and we'll talk to you between now and then. All right. All right. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. You excited to talk to people? Yeah. No, oh, okay. I mean, no one usually asks me anything. I am not, but all right. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello. I got nothing for the rocket, but, um, you know, Sox are playing well. Yeah, they are. Um, Kirk. Yeah. Um, some advice I need from your brother. Um, my father has Alzheimer's. My mother is recovering from cancer. Uh, I'm your age. And... You know, I have a relatively sex- successful career, but, like, I'm trying to be there for them. They're in different spots. What's your dad's favorite movie? Just fucking qu- What's your dad's favorite movie? Oh, good question. Uh, good, Bad, and the Ugly. So here's the beauty of it now. He can watch it every day for the first time. Oh. That's how you do it. That's pretty good. Yeah, see? Dad, we can watch so it again. Should I quit my... No! What, do you quit your I job? Quit job and just no. My parents? no. No, 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 no. It's only gonna drive you more crazy. No, you gotta you gotta pick. So, do you have brothers and sisters and spouses? And are you gonna get a lot of help? Or are you on your own? Yeah, my all of them. So my mother is now out of the hospital. She's out of Leahy, and she's living Good. with my sister what in is, Carlisle. Okay, okay. So that's my father's alone in Reading. Are they divorced? No, no. Okay. Just um, she needs twenty four hour care. Right. And he okay. Refuses to leave the, his his place. So, I mean, well, I mean, if he has Alzheimer's, like, you're going to have to, he's going to have to leave and get, is he, uh, is it his house or is he getting a, 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 a care facility? He's in his apartment in Reading. Well, you can't do that. I mean, stuff. that's not going to work. So eventually you're going to have to move him over to a care facility. And then, you know, I know with us, with, with, with you know, wives and brothers and, and, you know, everyone kind of pitched in, everyone was around and saw everybody every day. 
I mean, you have to do that, but quitting your job makes no sense. There's there's no reason to do that. You should also make sure that he structures his assets so that the long term care okay, facility well, can't claw it's, back. It's, sure, you can figure that out. Steve. He's, talking, he's talking more of a, a human. Are, you, are you a human being? He's asking like a real humane question. This is helpful advice that you wouldn't have thought of. You covered the humane thing. I'm covering the practical side. No, he didn't ask about the practical advice. side. Wait, we didn't and know that. You run a business. You didn't know that. Well, I'm on the road all the fucking time. Uh huh. And I just feel like I'm failing, like my own kids, not there enough for my father, not there enough for my mother. I'm, so uh-huh. that's why I'm thinking about just. Well, well, do you run, do you own your business or? or? Doing the job really poorly and getting laid off. Do you, okay. Do you, are you in a position where you could take, ask for three months off and get it? I mean, I could do like FMLA where they would. Yep, you could do that. But, yeah, you could do that. I mean, you definitely would qualify for that right now. I would consider that for sure. I mean, if you feel, put it this way, if any part of you feels like I need to take this time off, I'm going to feel worse if I don't, then do it. If you need to take three months off for uh, FMLA, do it. Like, and, and then be around your dad all the time, be around your mom all the time. And, and yes, I would, con- I, if, you think, if you think you can do that, do it. All right. Thanks, man. I've all been right. wanting to, <laughs> it's funny. You know, you're the one guy I wanted to talk to about this, and I appreciate it, brother. Well, call back. Keep, keep me updated. Or reach out, okay? Hang in there. All right. Thanks, Kirk. Right, see you. Boof, is he fucked? What? I'm just kidding. What? It's a tough spot to be in. It is. Hey, of course. How you doing today? I was doing all right until about three minutes ago. What's going on? I feel bad for that guy. Yeah. So, but luckily, so I was asked that structure. On in. I am a, uh, I'm a writer. Um, oh. I know that you're a rider now too. No, 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 no. I'm the rider. I'm the captain of the riders. I love that. I mean, like riders love riders. We're we're very absolutely. It's nice to be part um, of a community. That's that's good. Good. Yeah, right. That's. Are there any riders? Are there riders within the rider community who are assholes and fucking suck and stuff or no? Um, I there are some, but because they're riders, they're still good people. I think that uh, the riders that suck are, are a little more confused, and the riders that. Uh, spread spread positivity through the world are, are most of the riders, but That's what I like uh, to do. now that you are the rider, mm-hmm. um, what are your five favorite things about uh, Mr. Rico Bosco? <sighs> I mean, I don't know if I can. Thanks for the call. I don't know if I can limit it to just five. Mm-hmm. Jared, do you have any? Um, wow, five great things about being a rider. I like, I like the idea that you know that, like Steve said, I didn't know this that you know occasionally he'll slip a. He's got an uh, envelope full of money, and he'll like you know. He'll he slip understands a, loyalty. He'll slip a producer like twenty bucks in an envelope if they've done a good Rico? job. Yeah, that's what Steve said. No, yeah, he understands loyalty. Mm-hmm. He's never going to back down. He's got great um, um, gambling knowledge. Yeah, Rico is is one of the most ride or die guys going. Yeah, and he's the kind of guy you know. Yes, and he's he's not going to block you on Twitter. No, he's welcome to an open conversation, which I like. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he gives you an update on how he's doing in traffic constantly on, on, on the text thread. Hello. Hey, Kirk. Are they loaded um, up, Steve? So They're loaded up, Kirk. That's great. Seems like we're going to have an unfortunate theme for the, the calls. Um, so my dad died about nine and a half years ago. Okay. And I was wondering if you, would, you wouldn't mind being my new father figure. How old are you? 26. Oh, 40 years older than you. Uh, aren't I already your father figure, basically? I mean, do you need that me to tell you that? Yeah, I mean, as long as I can call in, ask you fatherly questions, and um, what's in it for me? You love me every once what's in a while. It, what's in it for me? Do you, are you going to slip me a little bit of money every month, or what? Sure, yeah. What, what's your retainer? I mean, I'd do it for 200 bucks a month. I mean, that seems fair. Okay. Can yeah. I get free admission to the shows? No, you may not. What fuck kind of question is that? Son, son, nothing in life is free, okay? That's free my life. father said to me, nothing in life is free. Okay? That's fair. Okay. Um, yeah, I appreciate that's that. Fair. Thanks, that's Dad. fair. Hold on. That's fair. That, 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 that's fair. What are you being a fucking baby for? Where are you right now? I'm at work. You're at work? Get your ass to the fucking gym. Where do you, where do you live? Where do you live? Uh, New York. New York. When you get home tonight, no dinner for you. You go upstairs and you go to your room and you think about what you said to me. Do you understand that? But then, do you yeah, understand I... that? Fine. You give me an attitude. Did he hang up? Did my oh. son hang up on me? No, he's still there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to say, Dad. I'll tell you what happened to me the other day, son. Okay. 
I'm doing the laundry, yeah. and your underwear is full of cum. Are you having wet dreams? No comment. Can you clean the fucking sheets? They're crusty as fuck. No, that's your job. You give me an attitude, son? You know what? You're out. You're out of my yeah. house. Get, you live your own life. Get the fuck out of here. Get rid of him. Abort my son. Abort my son. <laughs> No patience for that attitude. I'll tell you that. Jesus. Oish. Hello. Oh my God, Kirky! I'm so excited. Well, one second, pal. I just saw Rico uh, tweet. It's his show. I'm happy to spread the word about calls. Loyal kick up to my skipper. Wow. the calls. That that's that's respect right there. I mean, it's team effort. That's respect. So in his mind, I'm the dawn of the of this world. Yeah. And he's a loyal soldier. Sure. What a uniting of forces this has been. You know what? He's a made men of He's a made guy. Wow. He's made. Wow. That's how easy it is. I mean, it shouldn't be that easy, but I get it. You're a made guy. Yeah, but I mean, I had to earn that. Same loyal kick up to the stuff like that. It's good sure. mafia talk. Yeah. Huh. You know what we should bring Rico since fucking Jared doesn't want to go? Milton's. You I think do so. Yeah. Go. You do want to go. You're still yeah, in. I, yes, okay. of course. Well, why don't we bring why don't we bring Rico up here as well? I would like to do that, yeah. I mean, the guy dresses like a million bucks, right? He does. He's a suit guy. Yeah. He would love going to Milton's. He would love going to Milton's. Yeah. Buy one, get one free. Jared yeah. and Rico, done. Done. Uh, social yeah. applause for Branch. We'll go to Chestnut Hill Square, Chestnut Hill. The original sponsor of Kirk Minahan, not just the Kirk Minahan show, not just all the crazy stuff. Everything's wha- wackiness, Madawaska, insanity. Uh, from the beginning, they saw this guy and they said, I'm, I'm getting behind this guy. Like I do with Justin. Uh, Milton's.com. Buy one suit, get one free, or you get your North Face, get your Vineyard Vines, get your Johnny O's, which I have on right now. Uh, it's just the best store, and they've been so loyal to us. Help them out. Help yourself out. Help Milton's out. Help me out. Go to Milton's.com right now today. Milton's.com today or South Shore, South Shore Plaza Braintree, Chestnut Hill Square, Chestnut Hill. Milton's the store for men. Yes, hello. How are you, my friend? Oh, my God, Kerke. I'm so excited. This is little Steven Robinson. How are you? This is little Steven Robinson? Little Steve Robinson, yes. Okay, how how are you, Little Steve? I'm I'm good. I'm good. As we can tell, Kirk and Sweat Rocket, I've switched teams officially. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm finally voice. free from the web of heterosexuality uh-huh. and being under Howie Carr's sweaty ball. So, okay. Kirk, now that I'm free, I was wondering if you and Sweat Rocket would like to join me and Carano. In our version of Bagger Parkett. Uh for me it's a pass. Would you like to hear it? Sh- sure, go ahead. Do you want to talk to do you want to talk to uh, do, hold on, little Steve. Do you want to talk to former Steve? He's still here, you know. No, no, no. Steve, do you have anything you want to say to uh, no little Steve? Here. I'm saying it's it's bizarre. No, that's disgusting. Not, you don't believe that. That's not true. That's not true. Go ahead, little Steve. All right. So the game is called Flesh or Plastic. It's fantastic. We traveled pit stops across the country this is looking voice. for glory holes. I know this is somebody's voice. Crap. This is annoying me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jared's in. He already, you just nodded. He's in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's so me, I'm you, like, and the flash please. rocket. Okay. Okay. If there's no Johns at, at the pit stop to participate, uh-huh. we assume the position, put, close our eyes, and try to guess what we're practicing on this round. Flesh or plastic. Okay. Well. It's erotic and... You gave it it's erotic Listen, and tastes you, better than you, assholes, you, right, Jared? You gave it a shot. You gave it a shot. Right. I've never eaten a butt before, for the record. Thank you. I'm glad that's a historical document now. It's still true. load up, Steve? Uh, yeah, they're still loaded up. All right, we'll take one or two more. We got case work to this afternoon. Oh. Yo, Carabas. <clears throat> Calls for you, Jared. I'm going to Wrigley Field in about a couple hours here for the Cubs game. Uh-huh. I follow you on Twitter. Why do you hate the Cubs so much? You Great. never tweet when they have walk-offs. Great you question. never tweet anything good about them. All you do is shit on them. Uh, I hate Cubs fans. That's why. You hate this guy? Uh, I, I don't know him personally, but <laughs> Cubs fans are the whiniest fans in baseball. What did I do? Try abort him? No, Hold on. No, 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 no. So, so here's the thing about Cubs fans is they're that t- they're they're very similar to hockey fans 
where they're like, please talk about my team, talk about my team, and then you talk about their team, and then they're like, stop talking about my team. Like, it's just, they're a headache, so I just avoid them. Stop whining. Who's on the Who's on the bump today? Who, 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 what's the pitching matchup? I like a nice pitching matchup. Zach right? Davies. Oof. Zach Davies. I like and Zach. I don't know who's pitching for Pittsburgh. They suck ass. I think it's Trevor Yo, Cahill. Kirk, have you ever been to Wrigley? I have been to Wrigley. Thoughts? Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. It's good. It's good. It's like... But, like, the experience of it, like, takes over. Like, you're not watching a game. It feels like you're just kind of – if you only go there once, you don't care about the other team. You get kind of wriggly. I, I, it was okay. It was fine. It's a fucking baseball park. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah, Ivy's ha- very green. This is game number eight for me this year. So, let's go Cubbies. Yeah, exactly. Goodbye. Let's go Cubbies. Hello. Morning, guys. How are we doing? Great. Hey, just question the whole on the K situation. Do you think that uh, the drugs led Kevin Millier to kill, or do you think killing led Kevin Millier to drugs? I didn't say Kevin Miller killed anybody. No, in my opinion. I mean, I think he did. And, you know, just going over the stuff, but I just, I'm just curious if you think that. Uh, like well, I said, I'll, I'll just, say that if, if he did anything like that, um, I think like everything else, you know, I think so much of it starts from a childhood where he bounced from foster home to foster home. He said he was abused in those foster homes. I actually, you don't believe that, Steve? You don't believe he was abused in those foster homes? Sure. I'm just saying, like, it's that he pa- said it. Well, I, be- I believe that. I think he's it's always, part of... He's always shot straight with us. Well, you're rolling your eyes. I mean, He's I, always shot straight with us. Well, but I, I do think what happens in some of these youth is can can be a roadmap for the rest of their lives, for sure. So you're saying, do I, do I think that the drug... No, I, I do I... You know, like, he's doing different drugs now than he was doing in 1989, for example. I don't think the drug... If, if he's doing these things, I don't think it's the drugs. That's, I guess, is my answer. And then, right? Would you agree or That's no? fair. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not, like, a clear one way or the other. No. There are shades of gray. Right. Yeah. Hello. Two one seven. What's up? I just have a quick question. Random. What's the furthest you've traveled for a wedding? Because I'm in a bit of a pickle right now. <sighs> oh, I'm uh, uh, from here to California. My buddy Jim. I gotta go to fucking Alaska. Oh, what? No, 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 no. No, that's no, different. No, no. Definitely go. Alaska's no. awesome. No. No. I'm, I'm saying, but I'm saying if it's like, you know, who's getting married? Let's see. It'd be my wife's father's friend's kid. Oh, no, absolutely not. I'm saying, see, if you don't want to go, though, that's that. that I know you, your rule is to go to all weddings, but that is very loose to go to Alaska for. Uh, it's just a good excuse to go to Alaska. I'm saying if you don't want to go there, though. I'm saying that that if you don't want to travel far. Why wouldn't far, you want to go to Alaska, though? Okay, but I'm saying the distance itself. Forget you whether you're not. That is not a, that's not a wedding you have to. Get on, a, get on a plane. Okay, but that's not a wedding you have to go to. Disagree. Who is it? Your wife's it's father's, father's my wife, friend's father's kid? friend's kid. Never met the people before. Oh, well, your wife wants to do this? Oh, she's been all gung-ho about this for... Hell what? Month. Steve, you want to go with her, Steve? I'll take her, yeah. Is that good? You want Steve to go with her? She'll be safe. Yeah, that works. I mean, she's about six months pregnant. <laughs> Perfect. No risks then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 so uh, so how does that so you you're are you in Boston or no? No. Uh what? central Illinois. Uh, it's a little closer, I guess. A couple hours closer. But so you're gonna fly out of O'Hare? Yeah, so we gotta drive four hours to Chicago oh! and have a six hour flight. To where? To Anchorage. Okay, and then from Anchorage, is where? how far do you go? Uh, it's probably about another hour and a half. That sounds miserable. Brutal. I mean, oh, I have been... Uh, it's been killing me for months knowing that this is coming up. So we have, look, man, just take it off. I'll pick her up in Anchorage. She's the designated driver from there. And you do the case. It'll be a fun so, weekend. Steve. You'll do the case. When's the wedding, though? Not sure. When's the wedding? Oh, a month. No, you're yeah, good. Take so your vacation. In. I I am in. So it's, sign me up. I, I will say, I will say, direct O'Hare to, to Anchorage. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I decided to spend a little bit more money just so we sure. wouldn't have to have any layovers. That's not that's not the worst trip of all time. Six hour flight and then the hour and a half drive, but four hour I, drive to get to the airport. That's dude. what I'm saying. Like that's probably the worst part is the four hour drive to get to the fucking airport. The worst part is the four hour drive and then the hour from we get out of the car then you get on the plane. It's an awful five hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's nothing worse than the airport before you get in the plane, all the shit. It, it, it's one of those Are you things. you flying first class or no? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately. Huh. Yeah, I've never done that. It'd be I mean, one thing if when you got class, there to your destination, there's like this, ah, okay, like 
Now we can relax. Now yeah, you have but, to go to a fucking wedding. It's but not even something oh, yeah, you really yeah. want to do. I was just telling the idea that I wouldn't mind. To me, the best part would be that sort of hour drive when you're done with the flight in Alaska for the first time. That's kind of a cool drive, I bet. Boston, to, to, Boston to Anchorage, 10 and a half hours. That's what I mean. It's only six hours from it's O'Hare? Lay, layover. But <clears throat> it's you're going back in time. Yeah, but... I mean, I guess you got to... Do you have any kids other than this? The one to be or no? No, just the one to be. You do sound you do sound appropriately miserable about the experience. I'll give you that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, no I mean, do that. yeah. It's just kid coming up, and then a wedding I have to go to. When do you when do you fly, do you fly there on a life. weekday on a weekend or you must go on, on the weekend? Wait, is she going to oh, be? Uh, she's six months pregnant now. Tuesday after Memorial Day. She's going to be seven months pregnant when you're flying. Oh, trust me, I warned her about this. That seems months and months ago. Am I going to have to like deliver your child too? It could happen. Oh. Stay. You were going to have your hands full, sir. Oh, yeah. It sounds like this, what, this marriage is not going so well. Mm. Uh, she makes a lot of money. That's oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then you got to go on the trip, I guess. Well, good. keep us up. Call us from yeah. Alaska if you want. We'll, we'll be around. Okay. Thanks. Right. Hey, good Steve, luck. I just hope you like Bush because she is hairy down there. Yikes. The answer is yes. This is a guy from upstate Maine. You <laughs> yeah. He yes. prefers it. God. Oh, natural. Mm. Wow. All right. You could be the last call of the week if you don't suck. Hello? 781, you're up. Greetings! It's Orville Rettenbacher. All right. I'll give it a shot. What do you got? Uh, I'm just brewing up a batch of my home-style butter here, you know, churning it along. Got some butter in my eye. I nearly ended up like our friend Michael. But I just wanted to call in and see how you gentlemen were doing today. We're doing fine. What are you shaking your head no at, Steve? What's the area code? Steve, please don't abort me. I mean, I, I make fucking popcorn for a living. Jesus What's the, I, I guess you. I can't, I can't see it on my glasses. What's the area code? 781. 781. Okay. Who, uh, this is a, who are you? My name's Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> my word. Okay. Who was your, what was my your, word, good man. Well, tell me about, tell me about, what's going on. The, what, I'm a popcorn guy. What's going on? The, do you like Jared popcorn? Or? Yeah, actually, I went to the 99 last night. They have oh, the popcorn there. Do they still have the, oh, yeah. uh, they still have the, the crackers and the butter thing there? They do. They do popcorn. You know, I'm talking about this. The, 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 are you too young for that? Probably. They used to give you the crackers and like a, a cheese spread with it. They don't have that anymore. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, that was so good. No, they do popcorn. Who'd you go with? I got takeout. Oh, you didn't go there. Go no. there. I haven't. Uh-huh. I haven't been to like a sit down. Like I haven't been on like a sit down like dinner thing in a while. Well, you just went to Melrose. Yeah, well, that was my family. That's sure, different. I understand. What'd you get the nines? Uh, I get the half chicken tenders, half steak tips with the uh, French fries. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I might go mashed potatoes with that. Yeah, they have really good mashed potatoes. They do. The 99s, I haven't been there in forever. I used to go all the time, mm-hmm. but they're so tight with the Red Sox, I don't go anymore. I, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Maybe I should put that aside, though. Yeah. I'd go to the 99s. It's good. Yeah. Kids eat free after a win. That's what I've heard. It's true. Yep. Yeah. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry, Orville. Oh, no, no, it's all right. Mrs. Rettenbacher was just giving me a quick blowjob. So it all worked out quite well. <laughs> Wonderful. That's, that's, I'm so glad you're still getting it done, Orville. That's great. Absolutely. Well, I, I have to go now, but please, gentlemen, enjoy some more of the Redenbacher's popcorn and, and do me well. Thank you, Mr. Redenbacher. Mm. That's mm. random. A lot of layers to that. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we'll take one more. Hello. Oh. Is, is this KMS? Yes, it is. Oh, sorry. I thought I was calling into Justin's KMS pre-show. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon? I, I, I thought I was calling in Justin's KMS pre-show. Don't you have Suck work? Don't, pee, don't, don't you have work to do right now, or no? I'm working on it. Don't worry about it. You want to say hi to Steve, um, Kirk? I just oh good, yes, good. This is your uh, buddy, Steve. That's all right. I'm I'm good, I'm good with Steve. Ziggy Robinson. Um, oh. uh, Who could forget? Uh, Kirk, I just wanted to uh, I wanted to say I appreciated your bravery and sharing your experience with the CCN. Thank you. Um, I, I I had a kind of similar experience out here in Wisconsin. Okay. Wasn't a dentist person. Wasn't a dentist per se. Um, he did go by the footman. Um, Oof, he was a podiatrist. Uh-huh. Did, did did perform some unspeakable acts. Okay. Um, so if there's any survivors out there of Dr. Michael Lacey, nope. you're you got, not alone. Here's the problem, Zig. You got the state wrong. Are you sure? Well, I mean, that's that's where he started. He's not. I don't think Lacey. He's not Wisconsin now, is he? That's a well, that's, that's where he that's where he performed the unspeakable acts for not. Oh, okay, well, so. yeah, I mean, he's a, you know, I, I don't believe that's a state, but he, well, well, go ahead. Okay, anything else? Swinging, swinging a miss. Well, there you go. Goodbye. 
That's the Ziggy Robinson? That's the Ziggy Robinson. Hello? Hey, Kirk. Yes? This is Phony. Phony who? Phony Graffinino. Oh, oh Tony Graffinino. Yeah, look at that. Wow, I think it's Phony. That's uh that's O five. Tony Graffin. That's a that's a Castiglio name right there. Right? O five, yeah. Where you got Tony? It's uh you know, it's getting nice out. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to think about, you know, the concert going. I was wondering what what your concert routine is. What what kind of venue would Kirk Minahan like to see a a, a concert in? There's only really one concert I'm interested in seeing at all at this point in my life, as you know, Tony. Uh, <clears throat> that's Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, or Bruce Springsteen solo acoustic. Um, I like myself. I prefer as a rock and roll guy a good old indoor stadium versus an outdoor stadium. It just doesn't feel the same outdoors. Outdoors is more fun and like kind of laid back. When I'm doing going to a Bruce concert, I'm going to work. I'm punching in. Right, right. You know what I'm saying, Tony? No, I mean, do they, does he play smaller venues like a small club ever? Yeah, actually, he he did that that benefit that I went to with Smitty that I I left. He for. left. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll do stuff like that, like benefits. But I mean, you know, he's if, when Bruce goes on tour next year, probably. You know, he'll play. You know, if he's in Boston during the winter, he'll play the Garden. He might play Gillette. I mean, he plays big, big, big arenas. He's Bruce Springsteen, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. He's famous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I prefer like when when he goes to the acoustic tours once in a while, he'll play. Smaller places, I saw him at the Ghost of Tom Joe tour. He played the Low Memorial Auditorium, which was awesome. He he plays Gillette. Yeah. Damn. It's Bruce Springsteen. Who do you I think know, he is? But it's, it's 2021. I feel like most of his audience I, I mean, is, is, is like 50 years old and rich and has money to, to spend. To yeah, a, a large, sorry. No, go ahead, Tony. A large concert hmm. venue. I, I need to be close to the act. I need to see the action. Tony, I understand that. I do. I, I like if Bruce plays in Gillette, I go, of course, and I have a good time. But it's not the same. Yes. Hey, Kirk. Hmm. Hey, I gotta tell you, your critique of uh, salespeople just could not be more spot on. Like, I, I just got into sales. I just graduated, and I already want to blow my fucking brains out every day listening to people in my well, office talk. Well, they're, they're so just, they're just, I could not agree anymore. Yeah. Well, thank you for the call. I appreciate that. Don't blow your brains out. I mean, they are just empty people. They I have. Can't, I can't believe this salesperson has time to call into a podcast. <laughs> exactly. They have no. They have no vision. They have no brains. I mean, just communicating with these idiots during the course of the case is just. Un- it's not that I even have to communicate with them, but they're just fucking stupid people. Yeah, they're shallow, stupid, self-absorbed, unmotivated, fuckheads. unmotivated morons who have, between them they've read a single book in their life. Ever. I don't know that many people at the company have a great relationship with the sales. Well, why doesn't Dave fix that? To the fucking bitching and moaning with Nantucket Magazine. Fucking yeah. get rid of the sales staff. Yeah. I feel like he, he hears complaints about them fairly often. He complains about them. Yeah. yeah I don't know why that's Do you have not... issues with them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They suck. <laughs> Constantly. Yeah, they fucking suck. They're stupid. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to list them yet, but I will at some point. They're fucking dumb. Mm. You know? You I, it, it's, it, no, they're all no, valid complaints you're, when you're complaining. You're absolutely right, but it's just it's just banging your head against the wall. Yeah, that's what there's I mean. No, I, I, I've, there's I've, there's right, no meritocracy right. in the barstool sales department. I have graduated. Failure is rewarded, and there's no improvement plan whatsoever to turn it around. Correct. I've it's graduated. Not a podcast company. It's a gambling company. I'm right. I'm done banging. Like you said, I'm done banging my head against the wall. What salespeople have done it for fucking ten years. I'm not doing it anymore because they're not they're not bright people. Mm. And I guarantee you, none of them have listened to the case, so they have no idea what they're even like trying to sell. That's what drives me nuts. Mm-hmm. They asked me the other day. Are you gonna, do you want to tell me this or no? They asked me the other day if everything was already pre-recorded. That's what I'm saying. Like you just this is this they don't, and that's okay. They don't know that, but find out on your own. Like listen, pay attention. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Like I'm not even saying you have to listen. I'm even saying to them, don't listen to every episode. No, all they had to do was listen to the sales presentation, which I took time to go tell them. Here's what we're doing. It's not part of KMS. It's a new show, and these are the kind of sponsors that we would like to have for it. And apparently, they were uh, too busy at Head Gym getting fucking facial massages <laughs> while I was giving that sales presentation. What's your they, issue? Because they did not take a single bit of information I offered and incorporate it into the sales strategy. What's my issue with them? Yeah. Uh, they've tried to pivot multiple times with, like, a sponsor would come to us 
and say, hey, we want to buy X amount of weeks of starting nine or section 10. And you then try they would come back and else, be like, right? yeah, sure. Do you want four weeks of section 10 and four weeks of another show and four weeks of this other show? Token to you. And, oh, <laughs> and they also, um, there was one other time where they came that they were like, yeah, like, can we, can we get like eight weeks of starting nine? They're like, how about uh, we actually have, uh, uh, this Yankee podcast, section 10. And like they pitched it. Like they don't even know what the show is. No, right. That's what I'm saying. That that's my that's your tra- but I it just trust me bananas. I, yeah. I, I, you know. There's been multiple examples of that over it's the endless. years. Endless. Yeah. But they don't care. They're stupid. All right. Uh well thanks to Jared. Hi, Kirk. Oh, go ahead. What do you got? Fuck. Um Fuck. can I ask Rocket a couple of questions? Oh, sure, sure Tim. Go ahead. They'll be very they'll be very quick. Hey yes. Rocket, uh two oh two and two oh three. What is the significance of those two numbers? Two oh two and two oh three. Um I don't know. Yeah. That would be the number of days until Thanksgiving in, in uh, Black Friday. <laughs> oh, that's not good, Jared. I mean, I, that's a decent well, amount of time. It's away. closer. Every day is closer. Yeah, it really fucking does. Yeah. Every day is closer. I think I'm, yeah. I'm going to take a vacation this November. I'm just going to. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not responsible for this because I'm off the grid, baby. Yep, I'm off the grid. That Dave will be fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally, uh, he, will, he definitely won't criticize if you do that. That's All for right. sure. Listen, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be off the grid that week. You can tweet that out, Steve. Kirk Manning Show, Jared Krabbis. I don't give a fuck about <laughs> two president. I'm, take, I'm taking Thanksgiving week off. Please. Get, I please tweet that. that. Rocket, um, I have a fun little uh, game I like to call Jerry Callahan or Jared. Okay. So oh, Kirk, oh, I like when this. When Kirk made these statements, <laughs> yes, when yeah. Kirk made that statement, one. Yep. Was, was referring to you or to Jerry. Ooh. Okay. okay. The I'm first not, one I'm is, two. And, I, and I quote, this fuckhead, this dummy, this drip. That feels like a Jared. That's to me. me. Yeah, that's Jared from Red Thirteen Studios. Is that right? I think. Okay. Oh, Steve-O. Yes. Huh. July eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Good job, Steve. Yeah. Um, I stand by that. Let's see. <laughs> I don't think it's. I mean, good. I hate. I hate and like him a lot. At the same time, he drives me nuts. Jerry. That's Jerry. I don't feel. I. I have never hated Jared. And I don't drive you nuts either. No, no, no. I've always liked Jared. That would be Jared. No, oh, really? What? When did I hate I him? He, uh, one twenty-five. Oh, oh no, eleven twenty-five. Uh, one twenty-five twenty January. Not oh, this, this past, past January. Twenty. That's this is twenty twenty-one, yeah. Tim. I got canceled. Yeah. No, no, no. January twenty-fifth, twenty twenty-one. Hmm. Huh. I don't, I don't know what was going on. I don't drive yeah. you crazy. No, I don't hate you. Go ahead. Not I pol- to stir the pot, but oh, uh, Jared, last question. Mm-hmm. You said that you, you have massive anxiety about, what was it, dancing at your own wedding? Yeah. I would love to see that. And moving back to New York. Well, Which gonna... would you rather? You have to do one or the other. Would you move back to New York, or would you go to Kirk's dentist, Dr. Dan? Would I move back to New York? I mean, what? Where did the wedding thing come from? Was, well, you're just listing your, your top anxieties, yeah. giving people perspective. Would okay. you? Would you? Thanks yeah, you're anxiety. Yeah. Thanks would I rather time. move back to New York or go to Doctor Dan once a month? Or go to Doctor Dan once a month? Uh, I'd probably go to Doctor Dan once a month. Yeah, you're in, you're out at least. Oh, I mean, it it's two sounds like it torture. takes two fucking hours. But, but 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 it's two hours of torture versus, in your mind, a month of an endless but amount did, of torture. Did he treat grown ass men this way? We're saying that Jared is going to get the full treatment oh, okay. in the scenario. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah do it. Yeah, I guess. I think that's the right call. I'm not. I think I'd do that. I, I mean, I'm dreading New York. Yeah. I mean, if I had to, like, I, I guess I could make the best of it in New York, but I feel like two hours once a month is fine. Yeah. Eight four seven. You're up. <laughs> hey, Kirk. I uh, watched the movie this weekend and I uh, wanted to pose a question to you. Go ahead. Have you uh, noticed similarities between Rupert Pupkin and uh, Mike Geary? Oh, many. Uh, really, we probably yeah, said that before. he's funnier, <laughs> Rupert Pupkin. But yes, I have. Certainly, I have. I'm just picturing uh, Mike and Al walking through uh, Dave's Nantucket house. <laughs> <laughs> Break a hundred, there, Dave. <laughs> Tell me it's important. I hope you broke a hundred. Like, What's that? And uh, just. <laughs> Broadcasting to his uh, Patreon, I could see yelling that. at his mom as the death of the Vegas shooting for three months or three years, doing impressions of members of my family. I can see Dave all tied up and Mike, Mike hosting uh, stool scenes or something. <laughs> the rundown. <coughs> I can see that. 
That's Mike good. Mike like Geary. That. I like that. Uh, but Mike, well, I got a got a suggestion for you. Please. You still uh, you still doing those uh, throwback mo- or TV shows? Yeah. Watch them. Yep. Uh, there's uh, quite a wacky uh, Mr. Belvedere episode. Oh, there where sure someone is. Someone mentioned that to me. Uh, there sure the is. There I'll sure check that. What's is. The, yeah. What's the premise? Uh, Wesley's like Wesley's friends. Uh, I don't know. It's like a, a a blood transfusion. I don't know if they really describe it, but a uh, little aid slipped in there. Uh, ah. A lot of just well, uh, seems like a fun one. <laughs> so. Oh, there's a there's a lot of uh, inappropriate laugh tracks in this episode, and uh, there's also uh, a scene where Danny gets uh, casted as like Abraham Lincoln in a, a school play, right? And uh, turns to his black friend and says something outrageous. <laughs> right. So, uh, <laughs> Sounds right up my alley. Uh, Curious to see how Bob Uecker handles this. One. <laughs> he handles it very well. <laughs> I'll check it out. Thank you, sir. All right. Well. Yeah, keep doing good work, boys. All right, good. So load up, Justin. Yes, they are. Okay. Nine seven eight, you're up. Hey, Kirk, how you doing? It's your buddy Smooth Pita Dan. Happy Monday. My buddy who? Smooth Data Dan. Oh, of course. Yeah. Hey, Dan. What's happening? Uh, so one thing, I have a memorial tournament that I'm hosting for my father who passed. A couple of years ago. Um, I'm sorry about that. August 13, 2022. Yeah, it sucked. Well, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you but, called. Uh, I'm saying because uh, this is so far not a great call. <laughs> that was odd that you piped in with us. Okay. Right. Sure enough. It's a setup right there, Mike. And then, bam, you nail him. You got Pay him. attention. He didn't expect it. Either. Pay attention. Pay attention. Go ahead. August when? 13, okay. 2022. Where's it being Saturday. played? Oof. Where? It's being played at Black Swan in Georgetown. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I need a I need a fourth. And uh-huh. if you well, I wish you I wish you Justin's all in. all the luck you have with that search, my friend. Justin will do it. Yeah, you want Justin to do it? <laughs> all right, so. hmm? No. Do you really think I would say yes to that proposal? You like golf? There's a better chance of your father playing with you that day than mm-hmm. me playing. You like with golf? You, that day. you like dead parents? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> it's your, all you like set. memorials? <laughs> I'm all set. Good luck with it. Um, happy, uh, you know, say, reach out to us before them. Happy to promote it, though. Okay, he dropped off. Okay, cool. oh, maybe he won't call. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I get offers like that all the time. What are these people thinking? Do you think they're just joking, though? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah. I, thought, I think that one was serious. Yeah. 610, you're up. Thank you, Justin. The Tyler, amount of people Tyler. you reply to is odd. You stop doing that. <laughs> to what? <laughs> like if people say, hey, Kirk, I'm, I'm feeling I, – I admire that you do it. Like I'm dealing with depression. Oh, I've, I've slowed down. But that. that's got to be yeah. – A couple people have died since then, but what are you going to do? You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, so much, it's, it's a trade-off. the weight of the world yeah. on your shoulders, yeah, I mean, you know? Really, yeah. <laughs> You're watching TV. Hello. Speaking of TV, hey, Kirk, little people, big world guy. Hey, yeah. tomorrow night, right? Yeah, you ready? Da, 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 da. What did she say? What did Julie say? Give me a little, da, da, give me a little, da, 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 little people, big world new sound, uh, Justin. Uh, yep. Sure, takes my Go ahead. Yes, I'm ready. I, I think I'm ready. I, the problem is, you know, uh, little people, big world guy, is that uh, is that the first episode kind of you're just gonna kind of get the tone setter. You're not gonna have much happen. I don't think. Oh yeah, it's all it's all build up. How they're doing? What's going on in their life? No one cares. No. Yeah. And I don't like, and I, you know, I hate feet. Uh, Tor, Tori's always barefoot, which I hate. I think that's the, like, they're too, just the way they live. They're, they're cool. They're free and easy. I saw that, uh, he wants to, he's thinking about buying the farm now. Where are these, where do they come up with this money that he can buy the farm off his mom? Well, I always wonder. So, I mean, <clears throat> you have to think that land, the, the roll off farmland, Mike, in Oregon is massive. It's got to be like a, th- Twenty million dollar property? Oh, really? It's huge. I don't know. I haven't seen the show, so I don't know a lot about this. Right? Am I wrong, caller? It's huge, and I mean, the show is just publicity for it, so it's it's got to be a cash cow. Yeah, I guess, but at least twenty, I would think. I don't know what he gets other than getting paid for being on the show. I don't know what he does for a job. Exactly, I don't get it. And he's a, he's buying a new house every season. There's something going on. Maybe you and I will do a little people big world recap on the every week on the YouTube channel. Maybe we'll do that. I like you that. And I, yeah. Nothing I else to do. Him, like, how do you and Kate go through watching the show? Like, I have to like pause it and just stop and like look at my wife and be like, are these people serious? 
Like, yeah. Do you like? Does it take like hours to watch? Well, no, I just <clears throat> I, I, as I've watched it more and more, the more I understand that it's just choreographed and orchestrated a lot of it. You know, like it's just bullshit. And I don't, and I'll tell you, there's the people I like on the show, right? The people I like, uh, Matt. I like Matt. I'm okay with Karen. Uh, am I forgetting anybody? I mean, I don't hate Chris in his like because I know he's a serial killer. That's like, true. You can't hate no, him. We should interview Chris for season I hate one. Them oh, they're, maybe this like, show's different than I thought. <laughs> well, I think Chris has got. I think Chris has got. As I said, I think he's got the Carano thing going. Wow. You know. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I, I, I oh. haven't driven out there. I don't know what the rest stop situation is, but I'm sure on that bike you got to take breaks. I would think so. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, yes, but yes. Call, call in on Wednesday. I want the full episode one recap. Sounds good. All right. Right. See you. Four seven eight. You're up. <clears throat> hey, Kirk. I'd just like to introduce you to a new band. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it's a widespread motherfucking panic all the way from Athens, Georgia. You ever heard of them? I beg your pardon? You ever heard of widespread motherfucking panic from w- Athens? Widespread panic? Motherfucking panic? Yep. Motherfucking mm-hmm. panic. That's what those fans call it. It is the greatest band. Honest tunes. Just with played with a lot of soul, and I think you'd like it. Hmm. Like what, 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 what kind of... What, what, uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like a blues, jazz fusion. Kind of like a southern rock, but like... Mixed with a little a little blues and some jazz roots Ugh, into it. Sounds dreadful. Really grooves well, really jams. Sounds dreadful. Just stop saying jams. It sounds so dreadful. Why? It's just like, does it bore you? <laughs> yes. It, I, this guy's, I would you? trust his music cool. recommendation. They've been around a long time. I'm looking at them right now. The chorus? Yeah, they've been around since 1986. Yeah, they've had a long run. Well, good for them. Great band. Do you like them? I'm from uh, Macon, Georgia. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love them. You're from Macon, 20, okay. Over 20 times. Mm. Yeah, you know, you ever heard of the Almond Brothers? I, I have heard of the Almond Brothers. Yeah, they're from Macon. Uh, that's, you're, you're right yeah, about that. They're from Macon, Georgia. I know that. I, that, I, that yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, you like the Almond Come Brothers. Come down, stay with me in Macon. We go see the museum. Sounds... Go see what? The, that would be the fun. Brothers' graves. <laughs> see the graves? Great time, wasn't it? Well, you know, how, how many members of the Almond Brothers yeah. have? They've had like 30 members, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, it's been a revolving door ever since Dwayne died in the motorcycle wreck. Yeah, that was what, 71, 72? A guitar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, around there. All right, man, hang in there. Yeah, but check out Widespread Pain. I will not. <laughs> check him out. Come on. I will not. <laughs> I will not do that. <clears throat> uh, all right, Justin, take a call here. Oh, Ron, Ron you're up. Four hey, Kirk, how are you today? Good, what's up? Hey, Kirk. Uh, nothing. Uh, first time calling in, a little nervous, but I've been a listener ever since you've been on the old station. And uh, funny, you were just doing an <clears> S.A. <throat> fishing commercial. Uh, I have my face mask right here from them. There you go. Thank um, you. Thanks, buddy. So, big supporter of your product. I appreciate you know? that. Mike's mocking uh, it. But the reason I'm calling I is I want to no, say no, no, thank no, you no, for... Don't, 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 um, don't be like that. <laughs> yes, thank you for thanking me for what? I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Um, for actually bringing me and my wife a little bit closer, um, she oh, started man. listening to the case with me uh, and is excited and loves it and can't wait for season two. And, you know, she's a true crime person. I really was not, to be honest with you, but I started listening because it's something we could listen to <laughs> together. And uh, that's it's huge for us. So well, I appreciate you. that. Thank you very much, buddy. Thanks for calling. I'm glad that that story can bring you well, two together. Hmm. I appreciate it. Heard a lot of that. I was, kind, I was kind of bummed when Mike was on the show, though. We all are. Hey. We all are. Hey. What can you do? It's okay. He's doing okay today. A-okay. Yes. You hear that, folks? Mike Geary. <laughs> Back in Madawaska next month. You're damn right. Facing his destiny. Ah, yes. Nice place to die. Well, work Finally called quits. Get as hammer as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Just will be cooking away. Hello. Last call for any good. 215, you're up. Hey, Kirk. Hello. Craig from Friendlies. Oh, no, from Friendlies. Oh, Craig from Friendlies. So I think you said Friends. Craig. <laughs> Craig, how are you? I didn't, this is an odd... <laughs> I'm I didn't, your Friends character. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect the call, but okay. Yeah, hello, Craig. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know, since you want to be a little bitch and decline our offer for treats, we took our business elsewhere. Where'd you go? Any Wednesday at our location, show up and your name gets put in a raffle to meet Odyssey's top 
personalities. Oh. oh, there you go. All right, well, Craig, you tried. The important thing is you gave it a shot. <laughs> the <laughs> we impression was spot on, though. I thought it was Craig. <laughs> so did I. It sounded just like the Craigers. Hello. Oh, 774, you're up. Hi, Kirk. Yep. Hello. Yep, I'm here. How you guys doing? Great. Glad to hear it. So, April is in on a joke. Do you know who April is? I well, mean, I mean, <laughs> he knows one. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, April is the one that kicked me out of the Dr. Dan group because I told them how my stepfather, Moff Dudley, used to take me to Dr. Dan. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Well, that's not nice. I mean, it's a, these people have really been through a lot. Jesus, you're a Jesus. dick. You know that? That's where your mother found out about him, though, I guess. Yeah, you are a dick. <laughs> you're a bad person. <sighs> that's fun. It's, it's, it's disgusting, man. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. What's the game you'd like to play? That sounds amazing, Jeff. Does... <laughs> so, uh, the game is, I'm, I'm going to name three things, okay. and you tell me what they have in common. Go ahead. Okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. The first thing is the English language. Uh huh. The second thing is Kevin Mailer's genitals. Okay. <clears throat> and the third thing is, and I'm going to try and be respectful, Rena Conrad. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Mark in this one. I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Those are three things that Diana Natale abuses. Okay, there you go. There you go. I'll I knew that. I knew what the punchline would be too, but it was still it still <laughs> got hanging me. there. Wasn't it? it still got me. Uh, God. Uh, that's fun <laughs> stuff. I think we should end there. Four, two, three, you're up. What's up, guys? I was just calling in to see if uh, when the case. I mean, when uh, Kirk, you're done doing uh, the case. When you're done doing the Kirk Minahan show. Uh huh. You're done with the case. Uh huh. Would you be disappointed if Barstool put somebody else to do a criminal podcast? No, I wouldn't care. I would not. <laughs> good, good luck. Definitely would not care. <laughs> I don't know who they could get to do it. Feidelberg. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. I mean, I would wish them. I wish them nothing but the best. I don't know. This fucking guy probably did it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would love to listen to it. I got you. It'd yeah. be pretty entertaining. All right, see you later. All right, hello. 603, you're up. Hey, how's it going? Have you heard the news? How are you guys doing tonight? I'm, I'm, I'm not in a good mood. Have you heard about this? What's um, that? In the news. Uh, anyways, um, oh, okay. great job with the case, guys. Thank you. This is, right. um, this is a serious call. Okay. <laughs> um, I may have a great opportunity for you, Kirk, after you're done with all this. Got a camp craziness. for so. uh, I don't know if you have any interest in what going do on. You, what do you again. want? I'm trying to I'm trying to recruit cast members for a TV show. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, so I'm always open to that. I like to get back into television. What's the uh, what's the what's the premise? Well, let me just um, I can't really speak about too much of it, but let me ask you: um, Have you ever seen Hotel Impossible? No. All right. Um, I said all right. Um, I, <laughs> See, why don't you do this something? Is, this I, is the, this is the only way that the call is going to Why don't you do something I know you're going to miss doing? No. So let's do it now. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Are you guys like, no, 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 no. no. I, I'm, I'm, about, I'm, about to, I'm about to really get to the good stuff. Here. Now, when does Steve from Providence call and tell you to kill yourself? <laughs> it'll, always remind, it'll always remind me of uh, MHB trying to trying to talk over poor No, 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 no. <laughs> Nothing sadder than somebody trying to stop an abortion. You're a Belichick. <laughs> I thought you just said that you no. Maybe he comes out of the woodwork, tries to get a producer job. Oh, he's definitely stable, for sure, <laughs> to hire him. Jesus. Yes, hello. So has, has Dave Colony delivered his resume yet? <laughs> he called or, in. I don't think Colony would like sure. want to do it. I think Colony's got some bitter feelings toward us, sort of. Really? Sort of. Like, yeah, Probably. which is which is fine. I mean, I, I, you know, he's, I wouldn't, and honestly, Jerry and I are in a good spot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, even if he wanted to, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't do that to Jerry, so. I got a name. Who's that? Right. M.M. So, uh, I, let, let Mark me just say, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> What's it? Beyond the candelabra? Beyond the candelabra? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'll, I'll, I will miss not being able to see the, the, uh, the line of candidates who come in <laughs> you can thinking, thinking that they are capable of doing this job. 
I mean, you're just producing a show. Yeah. It's not like you have built <laughs> I know. Up. I know. But you're not, on some days, you're not the easiest person to work with. I would say, by and large, I have been. No, you've been great. You're on the call of Chris Curtis. You've been great, but you're also you're also. <laughs> but you're comparing uh, you to yourself, not other people. Well, as I'm saying, I'm saying it's, you're you're very unpredictable, and keeping up with you is difficult at times. I'm not saying I'm not saying anything like you're you're not um, you know nice to the people that you work. I've ever been. We've been right. great off air. I've ever saying, been combative or rude. No, or no, not at all. And that's not, not at all what I'm implying. So why you've are you been, turning to me? What are you bitching about? I'm, I'm saying <laughs> it, keeping keeping up with you. Well, that's my, what, I'm and, a genius. And, what do you want me to do? That's what I am well, saying is it is difficult to, well, to keep up. Keep up with Mike then. Come on, to keep up with come on board. Him. <laughs> run across the street. <laughs> Aren't you going to miss Mike? I am. Yeah. He'd yeah. Be, no, I be, mean, I'll, I'll miss the both of you guys. I'll look, I'll look forward to, you know, getting random phone calls in the morning. We'll text about Bitcoin. That's true. Oh, great. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what, was that, what were you calling about? Well, I, I was actually calling because on Friday, Steve left the location where Stacy runs at four in the morning. He did uh, on the podcast, which was very disturbing. Well, we want to, we want to, we want to go to Madawaska like for season that. two. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> plain and simple. You, know? you think any of you think these fucking fat losers listen to the show are going to be up at four o'clock in the morning? That's let's be fair. Well, that's, that's and they the, already know where she runs. Right. I mean, we, yeah. we, we, they know where she works. Yeah. They know where she works. Yeah. And if she wants to catch up with them, like, they have cameras installed everywhere in her life. I'm sure. I don't have any doubt. I go running with her if she wants to that morning after the show. Then I'll do it. <laughs> well, it just yeah, she was. She said she runs at four in the morning on a dessert road. Well, she said it on the on the, it say on the dessert road. I, that's where I run. <laughs> you say on the dessert road? Well, I mean, what kind of a fucking creep are you? For shit, the first psychopath. thing you think of is is like someone's going to go pick her up and kidnap her. Well, we live in a crazy world. I miss this disdain <laughs> Steve has for the calls. <laughs> I want, my, I want my next producer to be optimistic, happy. Oh, really? No. Now, how long okay. would that last? Yeah. <laughs> die. You beat it out of him. Uh, good point. Quickly. Really good point, caller. Thank you. Well, he's at least tipped the people off now. <sighs> go, for, go find her. Leave Stacy alone. We love Stacy. Hello. Hello, Steve. This is devastating. I'm going to miss you. Uh, Kirk, I got a quick question for you. Okay. I feel like I already might know the answer to it, but um, I was wondering your thoughts on the killers. You don't seem that uh, devastated big. about Steve leaving. I mean, it seems like you moved on. <laughs> if you're that devastated, like you really want my opinion about fucking some shit band? I mean, I was just asking because their main influence is listed as uh, Bruce. Bruce. I know that. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I feel like I knew the answer to that one already. But yeah. I mean, I, I don't know them well that. enough, really. I don't. Yeah. I mean, there's I've, probably a million shit bands that list Bruce, of or McCartney. Yeah. Or, of course. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I could tell the influence. Yeah, no, they're fine. They're okay. They're just not. They're not for me. They're not my jam. You know what I'm saying? I like the one song. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I right. get it. You right. got to. Yeah, some of their uh, hidden, their hidden gems. Okay, why don't you go hide with those gems and fucking leave me alone? I don't care about their hidden gems. Goodbye. Hidden gems. <laughs> Hello. I just, I'm just going to take calls till the till the uh, roll off guy calls. That's what I'm concerned. Right. About. Hello. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hello. Yep. Hello, podcast. Jesus, how are you? Uh, I'm. I'm not great this morning. I know, I know, Steve. Like, what the fuck? Don't let the door hit you in the ass. Why are you leaving a good thing? You left Howie. Now you're bail- bailing on Kirk. Now it makes me feel like my question is totally irrelevant. You know, um, I feel like it's, I feel it's going day, to be I anyway. Be I'm sorry to have done that. Fire away. Let's hear. <laughs> Let's hear this irrelevant question. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I got thinking the other day when Blind Mike was talking about how he likes a fist up his ass, and right. I started thinking about <laughs> you know, take him a- sure. a- a- all three, all three of you. I'd like to get your take on it. You know, mm-hmm. because I always wanted to try to bang a girl in the anal canal, but I've only had one in my life. And okay. I wanted to see, do you guys prefer that? If you had the opportunity, would you take the normal route or prefer would you go it? the back door? All no, three I, I'm saying it's bizarre. It's disgusting. I think it's important to remember, like, if, do you, do you defecate or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, the same, that's, that's the same, that's the same orifice. So right. like, you, know, I, you know, like, do, you, do, you, do you want, do you want poop on your dick? Yeah. I mean, if you want poop on your dick, great. Well, I mean, if they take Again, a shower, no, no, you know, no before, prunes, you do no, a little, no, no prunes here, but you're at, you get a little pool. Okay, all right, okay, all right, thank you. It's not good. You know, no prunes here. No shamers. You know, we'll do what you want, but you're asking prefer? No thanks. That's where people shit. They're still loaded up, Steve? They are. 570, you're up. I don't know what to say. Good morning, Kirk. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm very much enjoying the case. This is my first time ever listening oh. to a true crime podcast. Enjoy it while you can. Enjoying it. 
But your posting the other day sent me down the rabbit hole of her Facebook page for about an hour, oh, which I found very disturbing. Aren't you going to miss her, Steve? Uh, I will. <laughs> I will miss Miss Holly. Go ahead. But here, I just want to drop this to you because I know that you have a love of 80s music. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you know that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced their inductees for the year. Oh, they did today? Yes, they did. Oh, no, I didn't see. I, I saw the yeah. nominees the other day. Uh... All right, God, give them to me. She's going to annoy me, but go ahead. Well, the ones I remember, Todd Rudigan got in. Okay. Uh, Tia Turner got in. Everybody knew that would happen. I'm fine with that. Uh, the, Foo, the Foo Fighters got in. Oh, for Christ's sakes. Oh, yeah. Jesus and here, here's the one that's really going to annoy you. Okay. The Go-Go's got in. Oh, well, I mean, that's just, you know, you know what they're doing there. I mean, that's fine. I, here's the question I've heard. How do the Go-Go's get in a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but... Pat Benatar doesn't get a nomination, and prog in? groups like Sticks, Sticks can't even get a nomination to get in there. Yeah, and they had joke. five times the career <laughs> of the Go Go. That's a good question. Well, my my thing is Foreigner is not in again, right? That's what I, that's the only thing I care about. No, they don't even get nominated. It's a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke. Audio Speedwagon. Audio Speedwagon. They suck. They suck. Nope. They suck. They suck. <laughs> Six one seven. Kurt. High pitch Eric or Eric the Midget? Uh, Eric the Midget. For sure. Yeah. What my favorite. Honestly, my probably my actually my favorite whack packer. You know what I'm surprised because I always I loved Eric the Midget. It's great. He was I a late that, in the isn't game. Isn't that a big like uh, argument among Stern yes. fans? Like that's when the show started to suck. Yeah, that was on serious. He was more of a serious creation, but he was very yeah. funny. He wanted to fly with yeah. they had to put him on the flying with a balloon if he was gonna be Catherine McPhee. Yeah. And he tried to she tried to get one of the one of the people on the show whacked one time. Remember another whack packer or something? Yeah, yep. that Johnny Frado With, uh, guy. Johnny Frado. You, know what, you know what to do. You know what to do. <laughs> and then he used he used to call up as uh, Derek yeah. from Texas. <laughs> yep. Remember this one was, time he was a joy. You say bye for now. He's dead. He'd say bye for now at the end. But one time he was so mad at Stern, he yep. said bye for ever. <laughs> they called like the next day. <laughs> He was great. Oh, he, I'll great. tell you the yeah, beginning. He, the beginning, the to me, like beginning serious era Stern is an underrated Stern era. Like that was that show was still oh. popping like fucking crazy. Yeah. Like they they were Stern was super into it. They were on every day. I think maybe not Fridays, but but they they were rolling in from the start. Like everyone's into it. The wrap up show was good. They already was fucking awesome yeah. at that point. It was, that show at that awesome. point was still as good as it was. Uh, at K Rock, that's probably when Artie was at his best, like they, 05, 06. Yeah, I was like, they the had like a, yeah, like oh four to like oh seven, oh eight. Then yeah. he started to take a bit of a down. Yeah, but even in 06, right, they had like a ten member Howard News staff. Correct, Just correct. Ten people, right, reporting Just on doing, his every move. Yeah, and then doing and, 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 it, and it, like it, causing it, lots of trouble, and they did big roasts with people. Oh, yeah. Like it was Jordan yep. K was there a lot. Yeah, it was. It was not my favorite Stern era. Is still. Jackie, Fred, Stuttering John, Howard, like that crew is still yeah. my favorite. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that was really good. I didn't even realize. Thanks for the call. All right, still load up. They are five oh eight. Hello. Hey, Kirk. This is Alfredo. Diane's cool, Zach. Uh, the next. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We've been trying to. We hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is Alfredo Manufo. This is Alfredo Manufo. We've been trying to talk to you. tell Kevin Mailer uh -huh. that not every Italian is in the mafia. Yeah, I work in the Garden, for Christ's sake. It's a... I have to do well, that seems to be another. Well, as Tony said to Meadow when they were doing that college trip, he said it's a stereotype and it's yeah. offensive. There is no mafia. Yeah, there is no mafia. Right, Alf yeah. so you're So, Alfredo, where you, where, I'm a big Olive Garden fan. Where do you work? I'd love to go sometime. Maybe get a free, you know, a free meal or just even some complimentary breadsticks. I don't want to disclose the location, Kirk, because I'm worried about Diana Natale. When she thought I was in the mafia, she called me up and asked if I could whack you. And I said, whack him with what? A fucking breadstick maroon. You are surrounded with Seems some like dangerous well, people, okay. Mr. Minahan. I'd be more concerned if Diana was going there about your all-you-can-eat buffet situation. I could see her <laughs> cleaning the place out. But I'll tell you what, she oh, could probably get you somebody. Goodness, she could probably man. get you somebody there to work for cheap. I would say, right, Steve? I would think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, both out. She's what? a new HR woman. There you, there you go. Oh, <laughs> I do remember thinking right, that when I heard that later. name. Hello, hello. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call, guys. Uh, I do have to say before I ask my question, uh, I'm a big Rob fan. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, And Steve, I can't wait to hear you uh, calling into NPR spouting your fucking liberal bullshit. Uh, (laughs) It's a very hippie thing. I appreciate it. (laughs) It is a very hippie thing to do. You get rid of that shitty car. Was it like two weeks ago? I was in here, and he said he's becoming more liberal. That's true. No, we're not getting rid of the car. What are you gonna do with it? Put it into storage. That seems like a waste of money, though. Why? How much is the month in storage? Uh, it's no, I'm not gonna be paying for storage. Well, what are you building a storage facility knows. yourself? Like, what do you mean? Uh, it's already been built. I have I have places where I can keep things. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's a man where? who has to get rid of things. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's probably better Steve's leaving. What an insane person! Jesus Christ. Two years was the right amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Were well, you something else by the year now? I do have a question, actually. Uh, um, uh, you know, Kirk, I consider you a very modern man, a 21st century man, maybe try a 22nd be. century man. Thank you. That's probably more. Um, you know, there's a lot of these guys out here, they're following all these, like, pretty much just whores on social media. Do you consider that infidelity? Uh, we mean like like strippers or prostitutes oh, or something. I think he means like yeah, the Pete Abrahams of the world I liking. Mean, oh, like like, photos. The, like the Pete Abraham thing or yeah. something. There's just fucking whores everywhere, man, and, and you know the guys are, <laughs> like they, they guy. have an Instagram feed or whatever, a Twitter feed. They're they're just obsessed with them. I have a buddy, and it's it's just kind of to the point where it's a little bit weird, and he's married, which yeah. is you know it's, it's weird to me. Know, he's, uh, he's using the jerk I've off. Never been, I, 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 it, I, I, it doesn't do a lot for me, but uh, well, I mean it's the beauty you know, of porn. Excited. You know, porn's there. It's it's way more accessible. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. No, I don't. Mm. Oh my god! <laughs> we'll taser practice. <laughs> I was going to ask him if he knows how to run a board. I think he'd be a good addition. <laughs> he seems like a lot of laughs. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, anyone know if Dave's going to be participating in that um, bring your daughter to the Preak to stay like he did at the Derby? At the <laughs> oh, the Derby day event? How dare you say that? It's a loving relationship that I think is going to last for years and years and years. They'll grow old together and die in each other's arms. I, I will not accept that phone call. Well, see, it's, it's, it's an intellectual friendship, really. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How dare you? How oh. dare you? Probably have enough to talk about. Yeah. She was born probably last century. <laughs> I think. Probably. The guy's in love. What are you going to do? Don't, right. don't judge. He's right. single. He can do whatever he wants. Everything's legal. I'm not, I'm not a judge like that. If it makes him happy, he's happy. Thanks he's for the a tender call. lover. He, he may be. As we've seen. Yeah, that's, that's true. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? What do you want? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck do you want? Well, I didn't know it was me on the phone. <laughs> oh, well, I apologize for that. I guess the fault's on mine. What do you want? Hey, I had a question for you okay. regarding a movie. Regarding what? A movie. Okay, well, speak into the phone, please. I am. Uh, Kevin Costner plays a Russian spy. Well, you just gave the movie away. Did I? Well, maybe. Go ahead. I probably did. It's draft day. <laughs> is Gene Hackman in the film? He is. Yes, you just gave away the spoiler at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. That was more for Blind Mike, I guess. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Hello. 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 614, that's Am you. Am I on? You are. What do you no. want? Hey. Uh, so Kirk, I am trying to play the top 100 public courses in the country. And I wanted to know if you had a guess on how many are in Massachusetts. <clears throat> top 100? Top 100 public golf courses in the country. Yeah. Six. Zero. Really? Wow. Not a one. Huh. I don't know yeah, why I was so shocked. Yeah, I <laughs> what? What? Oh, congratulations. <laughs> that is how Riggs would react, probably. <laughs> yeah, true. My wife is crying upstairs. He has cuz come to the house. I could tell you, yeah. Don. You got any we Everyone seems to know. I didn't tell mom everything. I printed it off for you. What's that? Print what off for me? This, I, I thought you were reading from uh, the story you sent me. I'm going to miss you, Steve. I'm not doing calm. Reading the line from The Godfather. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he shot something Look how they massacred my dead. boy. Ah, Kevin, <laughs> classic color. It's actually, it's actually a fair, fair thing to confuse. I can see that. <laughs> Colin does tell that story about his, his brother getting shot up on the college. 
Held him in his arms. <clears throat> well, you any recommendations that we said? Oh, he's gone. Oh, what a shame. Will you do anything like that, Steve? Tour, uh, like some people see all the all the ballparks or golf courses. I don't no. see that happening. No. <laughs> like, I, I mean, does that. he have any, anything like that that he'd want to tour, see all of around uh, the world? Yeah, I mean, like national parks. Everywhere oh, the Republican National Convention has been. Yeah. I'll no. tell you where I went for a run one day, Steve, one of my cross-country drives. Eureka, Illinois. Eureka College, where Ronald Reagan went. I'll tell you, a small Illinois town. not high on my list, but I could be persuaded. You Ooh, should stop. Bump it up. Cute little downtown. I had a nice lunch there. Uh, and as an, I ran around Eureka College where Reagan went to college there. And it's very nice. They have a little museum there, too. All right. Yeah. I'll yeah. send you a postcard from Eureka, Illinois. That'd be nice. Obama was also from Illinois. You could see That's some true. Of stuff. Yeah. It's true. That's true. He, he was born, I think, in Illinois, right? <laughs> uh, I, I believe he was born in Hawaii. Oh, right. I'm yes. sorry. Hawaii. He, yes. he later claimed that he was born in Indonesia to make himself appear more exotic when he was selling his first book. Steve at the uh, <laughs> farmer's market. You know, that won't go away. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Some poor waitress at a diner. I think she's going to be doing a lot of restaurant eating, I'm guessing. Oh, that's true, I guess. No, I he cooks, so. his, cooks for himself. Not occasionally you want to treat yourself to if you see a place in town? I mean, little diners. I'm not I'm not looking to go hit up, you know, you know, five well, star What about the Steve whatever. Robinson uh, fast food uh, addiction? Uh, I think it'll go away. Oof. Yeah. Cruising by that exit with Wendy's right there and all of them. Well, yeah, I mean, well, they'll, 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 they'll be cook some, out. There'll be some meals of last resort. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you know, I want to, there's some, there are so, definitely some food destinations I want to hit. Good. Yeah. Good. Fear in Steve's eye when he sees a shirt with my drawing on it coming at him. <laughs> oh, they'll never find it. <laughs> all right. One or two more, I guess. <clears throat> I don't even know what to say, Mike. I don't, Mike, I don't know what to say. It's stunning. <laughs> stunning news. Shocking! The most shocking news yet on this show. Is there most anything? I was going to say most shocking news on this show. Is there anything on K and C that compares? To them? Probably not. Maybe I the Curtis they're... Day when he said he was drunk the whole time. That was a shocker. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but I mean, it was easy to what you you know. And he also wasn't elite. It's like, oh, he was drunk. That makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Kirk. It's Tara Granahan. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> It's Tara Granahan. You spoke Hello. to her the other day. Hello, Tara. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing okay. I'm just wondering how Mike's doing. I'm doing better. I'm glad you, know, I, you let me uh, vent on, on your program. Yeah, Kirk. So I was wondering, mm-hmm. have you been in touch with the Greg Hill Foundation and maybe contributing to them and uh, have them wear your T-shirt? I have not, Tara. No, I have not. I mean, I'd be happy to, I guess, I suppose. Yeah, I, I saw that out there. I said I would do it, so I should do it at some point, yeah. Happy to put money in Greg's pocket be, uh, I mean, to, uh, his, uh, <laughs> to his charitable foundation. <laughs> Tara, have you invested in a dump button? Uh, nope. Got to be a second level, Tara. Not yet. Got to be a second level, Tara. <laughs> Why, did you, I get on the can, air? You can never throw him curveballs. <laughs> yeah. Did that get through the other day? Uh, I, I thought it might have. <laughs> I can't imagine. No, no way. Oh, Tara. We would have heard some, that, some, right? Some, well, I did shows the first like that time. There was no don't bleep. Don't do a delay. There was no bleep when he played the phone call. Oh, it was on. Was it really? Yeah. Thank you, Tara. Oh, oh yeah. All right. It was on. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> no. right. We can't end with Tara. 905, you're up. Hey, <laughs> I heard you guys were talking about Curtis a second ago. Did you see anything about uh, Pat McAfee and his show talking shit about them? Yes. Uh, yeah, we'll play it. We'll play that Friday. Today's oh, not... Today's not... I didn't think they were I talking shit about her. I thought they were serious. No, they were like citing them as the a picture they showed. Yeah, well, they, the they, picture they showed. Yeah. He looked like rail thin, and then pictures I've seen of this dude, he looks like three hundred pounds. Well, we'll play the sound of it Friday. We'll see what's going on. But today's not the day for that. It's just not the day for that. Thanks for the call. Right. <sighs> All right, one more, Steve. I mean, that was these calls suck. Four and three are up. Four one three. <laughs> Visiting nurse from Rhode Island. <laughs> oh, good day for him. <laughs> yeah, you won't get hung up on it. No, I, I will. I will leave behind instructions. That's fair. Uh, on who's not allowed to call into the show, the secret phone line, all of it. Hello, Mike. Yo, Mike. Do <clears throat> you think I can hitch a ride to Madawaska with you and Justin? Come on, buddy. The more, the merrier. <laughs> Oh, great. Oh, I love you. Um, I just wanted to say this is uh, Chris. This is nurse from Rhode Island. Wow. He me. <laughs> I'll say earlier when Steve said he's letting things slip. 
That's wow. a perfect sign, right? That's that's when you know you it's time to go. Like even us. I, I didn't even recognize his voice. That's that was the most half-hearted abortion I've ever heard. <laughs> okay, he's fine. He's not even aborted. Living well. <clears throat> All right, one more, I guess. But you're in for Madawaska. You're confirming you will be there. Sure. Okay. What's acoustic theory going to do? So we're all wondering. He's going to have Mike. so much time on his hands. Mike, we're all wondering that. Oh, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> Look, just go after the next producer. Don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> one place to go. <laughs> 978, you're up. Hello. 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 Kirk, hey, what's stuff, up, right? man? Hey, what's up, man? Not much. First time, long time. I've been listening to you since you were with Jerry on EEI. So I got a question for you. If John Henry ended up selling the team, would you change your stance on the Red Sox? I know you have a vendetta against them, rightfully <clears> so, but... You know, what if ownership changed? Well, then you just wouldn't give a shit, right? Uh, would they get? Would Sam Kennedy be fired? Like complete everything. Everything gone. gone whole oh, new management, yeah, that, um, yeah, I don't gone. have an issue with the fucking like players. The uniforms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two oh three. You're up. Hey, Kirk. It's Kirk. It's uh, Christina, stay at home nurse from Connecticut. Hey, Christina. How are you doing? <laughs> I don't know why that Hey, I'm good. <laughs> uh, you want to play guess that patient? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. All right. Miami area. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw her this week for a um, a sore pussy from consensual <laughs> sex. Uh-huh. Um, bruising of the neck. Uh-huh. And um, syphilis and gonorrhea. Okay. There's no horse issues or anything? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'm going to say Pat Riley's wife. Oh, spot on. Ah, I thought so. Okay, good. Just Thank kidding. You. It's Port Noise girlfriend. Damn it. I would never have guessed that. I would have never have guessed that. Broke you right in on that one. God damn it. Well, there's no better way to end. 401, you're up. Hi, this is Steve from uh, North Kingston. I was wondering if you'd pick the uh, producer yet. Did you apply for the job, Steve? I did. Yep. Uh, I think we Steve, might, did you get my... I think we might have read, we, the, we might have read your... Former we might have read your resume. I'm a former army aviator. Yes, yeah, yeah, you were no, I want you to no, you've been you've been rejected. Oh, yeah. man. I think I wanted you to die Is there in some, anything some, else some I can form do? some form of fashion. It's a little strong to the members of our military. The left is always right the right is always left? The No. Uh, What's left, left is, is your rights? The left is coming for your rights. Oh. Uh, huh. It's true. 203, you're up. Except for the rights of, you know, game. Hey, this is Big Frank Bosco. I beg your pardon? This is Frank Bosco, Rico Bosco's father. Hello, Frank. Stay away from my son, all right? I know what you guys hey, do. Hey, over hey, 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 wise guy, you shut your fucking mouth. I do what I want. You understand? He's my son. All yeah. right, Kirk. Yeah, you know I'm what, Frank? You. You, know know what Frank? you know what, Frank? You know what, Frank? You know what, Frank? The envelope was light this week. Stay away from my son. I know what you guys are doing over there. All right. Oh, fuck you, Frank. Goodbye. All right. Hello. Seven seven four. You're up. What's up, Steve? Steve, we love you. We're gonna miss you. Uh, just want you to know that you're a massive fucking pussy hypocrite. You yep. let all these little minifans run you right out of town. Baby. I've heard that. I've heard a lot of that. Strong. I mean, what else? What's the other explanation? I'm too stressed. I got too much work. Oh, what happened to Mr. Big Steve? Fucking entrepreneurial. He's dead. Steve, you respond? Yes. I mean, I, I haven't even been paying attention to anything he no, said. You can't. Don't, don't do that. I don't, I don't pay attention to you know, the, the hater minifans. That's you bullshit. don't? I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, you sound like a fucking loser. You've probably never done anything important in your life. <laughs> That's, that is probably true. You know? to be fair. Like, is, so fuck off. Like, that, to, to call I'm, I'm probably I'm probably paying for your existence. You're on welfare, <laughs> no doubt. You don't have a fucking job. Like, why should I put any stake in anything I you mean, have to you say? Consider, would you consider backpacking your entire career off the town of Kirk Minahan, a fucking successful career? Oh, geez, I think I was successful. I bet, I mean, I've been successful at everything I've ever fucking done, you moron. Look, I've been successful at everything I've ever fucking done. I was successful before Kirk Minahan. I'll be successful after Kirk Minahan. Yeah, to be fair, he backpacked off Howie before he did it off me, caller. I mean, let's, let's be honest. He's only, you know. I mean, yeah, because when you think of a fucking successful ass person, you think of someone who quits every job they go to, right? Well, how else do you, do you end a fucking job, you moron? It's called, it's called uh, you know, moving on. It's called developing. It's called growing as a professional. 
I mean, you you wish you had a job to quit. So your idea of going uh, of growing as a professional is quitting your job and then like yeah. never ever yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna go start my own business no or something oh, I'm, I'm gonna like, like he, I'm gonna go live like, but if he doesn't want to do the job why why would you want him to stay and do the job I don't get that uh, caller oh no I don't I don't give a fuck we I mean you had fucking Curtis as a producer and you were fine anyway it doesn't actually matter it's a fair point All right, I just think point. it's ironic that Chris is the I not Chris fucking Steve, Steve? over here M- Mr Tough Guy with all the uh, you know, Minna fans, oh, can't let him get to you. Can't let the media get to you. Got to have thick skin. And here he is pussying out to go live some, like, Henry David Thoreau novel out on the road. Well, first of all, Henry David Thoreau was a dilettante, okay? Like, he was, like, what, 30 minutes from his house the entire time? That's fucking, kind of, that's kind fucking of fucking moron. On. That's a good point. That's not, that's, not, that's not that great. All right, thank you for the call. A oh, nice call. Aren't you going to miss these guys? Oh, I am, for sure. All right, hello. Are they loaded up? Uh, they are loaded up. Okay. Hello. It's over some actual questions, but you know, so far. Six one seven, you're up. I I have some questions if you wouldn't mind, Kirk. Sure, no problem, Tim. Tim, by the way, congratulations. You were the co host on the final episode of the uh, Kirk Minahan uh, 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 wrap up show, whatever it's called. I, I ended that show after uh, listening to Justin oh, Yawn. You- he was during during <laughs> listening to Yawn. I said, We're done. We're all set. Well, well uh, it's good to know I had uh some Yes. Someone's uh, yeah. or activity involvement in that. Yes. yes. So go ahead. <laughs> I was wondering how you would react to that. No way. Um, so kind of a little game, Steve. Are you up for trying to pronounce the words correctly that you mispronounced over the time on the show? Oh, I like this. Sure. Yeah. I know you love games, Kirk. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chestnut Hills. What's the correct pronunciation? Uh, Chestnut Hill. There you go. One for one. Uh, See? Bernie. Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff, because mm-hmm. he made off with your money. There you go. <laughs> See, he's learned. <laughs> that's, that's that humor. Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Joaqu- uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Unbelievable. Bam. All Unbelievable. right. Unbelievable. This one, uh, you, the reference is you had said Kirk was in the back of a sub- suburb. Uh, suburban. He was you in the back what? of a suburban. Look at this. Batting a thousand. What is this actually known as a baseball audience? Uh, some people might call it a crowd. <laughs> Where is this guy, Ben Kirk? That's a good question. Um, do you want to, this one's a little tough. You were describing golf and you said it was hit by hit by hit. This could go a couple different ways. What you, how you could really describe this. What do you, what do you, I'm, I'm not understanding. Well, the, in the uh, golf parlance, um, yeah. if you hit, you, you hit your T. Uh, ball out there is a different word for it. Then you hit your second you drive approach putt. Yeah, you could do that. That's fine. Yeah, that's that's workable. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. still batting a thousand. Yeah, um, this one this one could go either way. I, I just being picky here. Jim Coke, the guy who owns Sam Adams. Oh yes, I think it's a it's a K O C H. Yeah, it's it's a different. Uh, it's Cook, right? It's mm-hmm. not it's not right. like the Coke brothers. Yeah, correct. It's still batting a thousand. All right, last two. Okay. This is not a person's name. It's a place. Al Bini. <laughs> Albany. <laughs> That's how you would pronounce it. Did you really? <laughs> I don't know when that was. Yep. We're up there. Or yeah. I'll, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna compile these and send them all later. Uh, your actual clips. And then this one was you pronounce it Barissima. Barissima. That was the place where Hunter Biden worked. That's right. Fucking crook. <sighs> Ten for ten, you crooked, got, crooked no. motherfucker. Are you going to be There's in? Uh, no, two, there aren't two eyes. It's Barisma. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Nine out of ten, not bad. Nine, nine out of ten. Are you going to be in Madawaska? Are you going to be saying your, goodbye or no? Yes, sir. I got, I got a ticket. Got a place to stay. Okay. I didn't want to say this, but uh, <clears throat> it looks like we might be uh, roommates there, buddy. Oh, is that right? Okay, you can, you can, <laughs> yeah. you can have my room if you like. <laughs> well, do maybe. you want to know the word Steve pronounced perfectly without even thinking about it? Sure. I, I if you remember this, I can't pronounce it myself. Australo uh, astral o pithecine. Australopithecine, like the early the, early yeah. early uh, early primate. Look at that. Look at this guy. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> replace him. All right, Tim. Good luck, Steve. Gonna miss you. Thanks, Thanks sir. Tim. So you want you to miss Tim? I will miss Tim. Actually, Tim's a good minute fan. All right, take a few more things to do today. 401, you're up. 
Hey, Steve, going to miss you, buddy. Um, I'm curious, what's your favorite uh, wildlife that you're looking forward to seeing while out on the oh, road? That's a good question. Uh, I guess I'd probably have to say, um, you know, trout, like being in the Pacific Northwest, trout, salmon, doing some fly fishing. I think I'd be excited to see that. Like, I don't think I'm going to do a lot of hunting. Excited for the gas prices? What about uh, foliage? I am, yeah. yeah. Are you a foliage guy? Uh, no, not really. I'm not really. I mean, I, like, I think it'd be cool to see the the uh, sequoias, the giant redwoods out in California. <clears throat> That'll be neat. The, the rainforest in the um, Pacific Northwest will be cool to see, but yes, I'm not, not going nice. to be like going around looking to identify trees. You have, you have like a real camera and take pictures? Mm-hmm. What a douche. God, what a douche. Jesus. All right, go ahead. 404, you're up. <laughs> hey Steve, a uh, question for you. Yeah, what's up? So, do you feel like do you feel like you fucked over Kirk at all? Um, just because of things other people have said about him that he's hard to work with. Like you didn't tell him, I think for selfish reasons, because you didn't want him to blow up. Even though all of your experiences with him have been completely different. Well, first of all, I mean, it, I'm I'm an at will employee here. I can quit whenever I want. I don't have to give more than two well, yeah, weeks no notice. Kidding. Technically, like no kidding, but so, you're doing the show and the case. I mean, you're making money. You have okay, a good so job, I say, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in some other job. It's an at will employment situation. I'm in the middle of some project. Like, I mean, there's there's really never going to be a good time. I think it's a quit. reasonable. I think it's a reasonable question, caller, because I think there is a reputation for me with producers that I'm hard to work with. And Steve, up and bailing, I've heard people say, and I've seen it online. Oh, here's another guy. Kirk broke another guy. This guy can't stand Kirk. And then Steve made a couple of passive aggressive comments about uh, salary and bonuses, which I found to be, frankly, yeah. outrageous, <laughs> given your salary is yeah. fucking tremendous for I a took fucking, pay cut to come here for a podcast producer. I took a pay cut to come here. But it's not fine. a good it's not a good salary for a podcast producer. I took a pay cut to come here. That's true. We OK, so you don't you're not happy with salary. Are, no, I'm, I'm just saying freedom. the reality is I took a pay cut to come here thinking that the revenue sharing would be bigger than it has been. And that's not your fault. And like I've said a, a million times, oh you've God. been you've been great, for, great for me. But just like I'm at a point in my life where I need to do something different. And like there was <clears> never going to be a good way to quit. And I think that the way that I've handled it, uh, I think I handled it with integrity. Like I would uh, I, in the perfect so you, world. So you just well, he doesn't care, Call. He's not a human being. He's a fucking robot. In a perfect world, I would have preferred you tell me when the, until when the case was over. Mm -hmm. But But you understand why I told you before the case was over, correct? Because of Madawaska? Yes. I guess, but now you're going to be in Madawaska. Uh, Well, yeah, but I, I I wasn't planning to. Like you, 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 yeah, but, we, but I would you, you, you offered to extend my compensation, which put uh, Madawaska in play. Well, when is your compensation done? Well, you were still going to get paid. I think what we talked about was the end of June. Oh, I'm not sure that's what it is right now. I don't even know. We can figure it out. But we'll figure it out. What's that caller? I mean, he was still going to get paid through Madawaska. I know it just seems like he could have told you when you were negotiating your contract. That was a big thing on the show for a while. I don't know. Well, it I mean, but but, but I mean, I, but you know what? I would have signed. I, I would have not. I would have signed here anyway, even if Steve was leaving. Yeah, I know, but that's just that's just some nice information. I mean, knowing that you have to look for a new producer that you could have. Yeah, I was not. I'm, I, I, I was not. There help. are things about I'm not thrilled about. But Steve, as well, I said, from, Steve, Steve, Steve had to make his choice. He made it. I think he's leaving me. Like holding the bag a little bit for stuff like um, the Wilbur, but that's in January. What's he supposed to do? Not quit? His, like I'm just being I'm being honest. What's he supposed to do? Hold on for eight months if he doesn't want to do the job? That's I don't want somebody here who doesn't want to do the job. And I, I well, I think from my perspective, yeah, well, if I if if my if my future and my plans had any bearing on you signing a three year deal, um, you know, I could have been put under contract. You know, so yeah, but it didn't though. Exactly. So, right. So, so that so then it shouldn't matter. It should, That's it should, what I just it should, said. It shouldn't should, be like something. Did you ask to be put under contract? Did you ask Curtin to negotiate that for you? No, no, I didn't because or, I wasn't. I, mean, I wasn't. I wasn't going to try to force that conversation. I mean, if it if it was offered and there was a significant amount of money that changed that made it basically like worth it in my mind to well, continue that wasn't to happen. grind it out. No, that wasn't. Barso was not so, going to do that. No, they, so, they so just I, don't. It, view, it, it they just a, don't view uh, producers that way. No, it was just not a, even the you uh, issue. A moot point. So it just wasn't a conversation. I so it was more financial than you let on the other day. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say that basically the, the amount of money, if, if there was more money on the table, I would probably be willing to be miserable 
longer. Who needs that though? But th- but that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's basic human nature. Like if you if you came back to me and were like, yeah, well, well, you know, for for the case and for KMS, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Like I'd have to think about it. I'd still be burnt out and miserable. But if it's a lot of money, then you kind of think about it differently. But it would probably the only thing I would, would say about like that a, is an untenable amount of money. Is I literally said to you, you can take as much time as you want, and then scheduled Madawaska two yeah. weeks two weeks later. Yeah, but so no, Justin I couldn't take as much. But Justin was planning it. Yeah, but I'm still ha- going to have to be there. So, no, I couldn't we take could, as much Well, time I mean, off. you wouldn't be working. You would physically go to Madawaska, goof around, and leave. I mean, yeah, but, it, I mean, it is work. And, like, I would I would have been setting up the technical side of it. And, I mean, that's, that's like, I mean, that's not even, I mean, that's, uh, was it wasn't even part of the, the decision. I said you could take three months off if you wanted to. Uh, yeah. And then when you came back, you'd be working three days a week for the next four months. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, doing nothing else. I mean, I, I mean, for sure. I, I mean, so, but yeah, I mean, could, I mean, it could be a, sh- a short sighted decision. No, no, I, I, no, a very no, relaxing, I, a very relaxing summer with a, a, a low work pace, but it's well, it definitely like, would have been, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I, but I'm just saying, you know, I, but that's, those are facts. I mean, you know, if you're unhappy with your salary, you should have talked to me about that. You never did. Uh, no, I didn't because once so you I, literally, once, like you literally never have. I know. That's why, so, that's why so I'm saying why didn't we have this conversation? It's, it's not. It's not like the compensation isn't the biggest factor. Otherwise, I would have brought it up with you. If I was unhappy with my compensation, I would have said well, you clearly about are it. unhappy with their compensation. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you the moment where things kind of fell into place. It was when we were in South Carolina uh-huh. and it was one of the times we were doing a stream yard show with Mike. Yeah. I'd forgotten some cable or something. So we had to do the stream yard show. Right. And you said, like, you know, we're we're not partners in this. And that's when I realized, like, no, we're not like I'm I'm. Just stood in an indispensable. I'm a dispensable role here. Well, you've done a great job, but we are not partners. <laughs> exactly, we're not. Right, I, we're not. Do you thought I, we were? No, no. So I'm under. Why was that the moment? Uh, because it just kind of it. I guess put things. You into work focus for, me. for me. Yeah, I pay for your salary. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it put it, like. Well, I, but like, did you? You thought <laughs> I mean, like, you've done a, a great job. I'm very grateful. If you said to me, "Hey, I, want, I changed my mind, I wanted to stay," you would stay. I, if, but I'm just saying. That, so that was sort of a crystallizing moment. Yeah, yeah, it was. That was a pajamas thing. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I yeah. mean, you should have fucking gone the night before to the place. Sure. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Okay. Oh. I should have. Go One more thing, Steve. One more thing. Uh, Does this help I you can't... with all callers? Does it give you any more definition or no? It seems like there's a the deeper stuff going on with Steve than just, you know, that. It, now it does, like the worm's turning toward yeah, me a little bit. Seem... As always. As always. Go ahead. What do you mean the worm's yeah, turning toward you? Deeper it's more of a, Steve, it seems like it's I, more I of a me issue than that. It really isn't. It really isn't. You just said the moment you changed your mind was about me saying something about the cable. Uh, no, no. I mean, it was, it was about, you just said that it was, no, it was, it wasn't about the fucking cable. It was just, I understand, but, but I'm, I understand that it was a bigger issue than that, yeah. but that's, that was the moment I said it. No, I, I, I guess I kind of thought that I had a larger role in building out specifically like the, the case project. Well, you definitely have. Um, but I mean, the, the way, <laughs> the way you talked about it in that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm dispensable to Kirk. Yes. Well, there you go. So, what the fuck does it matter? If but, I quit? but you're, but you're close to indispensable. But like everyone's, dis- like, like if you died tomorrow, I wouldn't retire. <laughs> yes, the case I would go on. So you're not indispensable. That. But you, I, you know, I, mean, I think I've been pretty clear on what a great job I think you've done. You and, have, and you how have. important you've been and, to the case and, and you, to the show. You've been, you've been great to me. Like, uh, you know, even you know, microphones off, whatever. Everything has been great. I just like, I just need to do something different. Yeah, that's fine. I don't, I don't mind that. But I'm just saying, you know, okay. Anything I, else? I just like I, I have I have seen, uh, you know, like people saying things online like I didn't handle it properly. I don't know. I don't know exactly how, like what what from your perspective would you have preferred? Like knowing like 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 Steve's Steve's going to get done at the end of the case. How how, how do you handle that? <clears throat> uh, no, maybe, I mean, like I said, maybe I waited till the case was over. And found that spot, but if you think okay, so that you, was my, that was my original plan. But right, as what what I've said before is, I didn't want you committing to Madawaska. I have um, six eighteen as your last day. You have six eighteen as my last day. Okay. Yeah, that gives you a week after Madawaska. Fair. Yep, that's fair. Okay. Okay. Is that the? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, six eighteen. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> God, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was just saying maybe I was maybe I was wrong to. Uh, let you know before you started selling Madawaska tickets, but no, it's fine. It's fine. All right. Go ahead. Hello. Hey guys, am I on? Yes, you are. What's up? Uh, I've got a, um, idea to kind of flush out. So give me like a minute card to do this, but Steve, best of luck moving on. You're going to be a mess for sure, but hope you find solace or whatever it is you're looking for. But Kirk, more importantly, 
You ever seen the movie Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal? Yes, he's very good in that. Yeah, he is. Got, got an idea. So, you know, he's like a photo journalist yep, yep. type deal. <clears throat> uh-huh. Chase there. Mm-hmm. Event. Eventually gets involved in kind of, you know, setting up things, moving pieces around, getting mm-hmm. the perfect shot. So, Steve, you've contributed to the case. Why not do so in perpetuity? You're on the road in these exotic areas of the country, the world. Maybe you start doing some things. You don't need to put it on the record as of now. You tip off Kirk down the line. Mm. He starts putting the pieces together. Well, you guys chasing. elaborate. Case I, think be, two, case I think it'd be more interesting if Steve was actually leaving. Thanks for the call. I think it'd be more interesting if Steve left and became a serial killer. Didn't tell me about it. I, I hunted one down. It was him. People have questions to ask. 508, you're up. Hello, Kirk. Yes. Hi, this is Apu. Apu Nahapasinamate. I work at the Quickie Mart. How are you? Skeptical. I have a question for Steve. Okay. So I work part-time and deliver the food, and I wonder if I deliver some lamb vindaloo right now, will he consider staying with the show? Mm. Mm. Lamb vindaloo from the Quickie Mart? That doesn't sound bad. Well, I, I work part-time at the Indian Garden, you see. Oh, uh, okay. Children. Well, that was, that was critical information you should have supplied. Yeah, I mean, if it's good enough. Mm, there you go. All right. Didn't really work out. Goodbye. <laughs> you tried. <clears throat> Hello? Kirk, Fool yes. People, Big World Guy. Oh, boy. we got some stuff to catch up on. I mean, I I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, I don't know if you saw the first episode of the new season, Steve, of Little People, Big World. I did not know. I mean, Chris gave me all I needed in that episode. I could, I could write a book on the Amy, I could write a book on the Matt Roloff mastermind Don Corleone move of offering to have the wedding at Roloff Farms to Amy and Chris. Oh, it was so well played. Power and move. Way, oh. Good. I, I don't even know if it was Matt, though. I think it was Karen. I think that was a Karen play. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, oh you think it was the. Little, yeah. Got her a little sauced up with that rose. That's right. Like, hey, what do you think about having the farm? Having it at the farm? And Chris was all. Uh, my favorite part of the whole episode, my favorite part ever in Little People Big World, happened in the first episode. Where Chris, who I think has got. You know, as I've said, a little bit of the uh, Mike Pence Carano thing going on. Talked about having Amy on the back of the motorcycle. And Amy was like, oh, I know you've had a lot of women back there over the years. And he's like, oh, what can I do? What can I say? I'm a bit of a man slut. <laughs> I, I took some notes. I actually oh, watched good. the episode twice. Oh, good. Let me hear it. I'm and curious. I could, be- I could not believe he said that. And, and she definitely seemed like, oh, I know your past, Chris, so I don't know. I, just the whole episode, you could tell Amy's the worst person on the show. <laughs> I have to say, though, can um, I, I, I have to do a rare thing on this one. I have to be on Amy Roloff's side. She can't get married at Roloff. That'd be a very fucking bizarre thing to do. It's going to happen, I'm sure, but it's bizarre. No, I agree with you. When he when she brought it up, I was like, there's no way. And I mean, it's going to be a great storyline for the show, but you can't get married there. I agree. You thoughts of uh, thoughts of Amy's leather like shirt she wore to the the motorcycle shirt she was wearing? Not great. So no, I have great. some questions about the motorcycle. Okay. So I can't picture Amy on the motorcycle now. Whenever I see the motorcycle and Chris, I just picture Carano on the back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then Poor I, Carano's also, had a tough day. I don't know if you noticed, um, Amy's having a hard time cleaning up the dog shit now that she's not living on the farm. Yeah, it's not good. Any possibility she was over at Tommy Harper's? It's possible, it's certainly possible. I think it's, okay. <coughs> I think it's yeah. worth examining. Yeah, she's not, she's not enjoying yeah. that. She's, she's not a clean person. No, that's the thing. The new house is a mess. And Already a fucking mess. I know. What are you laughing at, Steve? I'm just, I'm just laughing at this TV show. Oh, it's a it's fucking bizarre. mess. I mean, I, I understand it's not easy for Amy, but so I like mean, Keisha's house. It's not that bad. No, but Amy does have to clean up her fucking yard. <laughs> she does because it is, you know. I want to. Add- yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you have a tough time every scene in Amy's house? Everyone. A lot of feet. A lot of feet. A lot of feet. A lot of feet. Yeah, I mean, and Chris, Chris that, kicks those feet around. You well, I told you Zach and Tori have always barefoot. You know, the, the but yeah, Matt, God, God bless Matt. No, 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 uh, no barefoot. But yeah, Chris is barefoot all the time. And then they go upstairs yeah. and play these games. It's very, the, the whole setup. And what else is weird about it is almost like, like, they don't acknowledge that they have other kids that exist. It's just weird. It's very strange. Yeah. They only care about the little one anymore. It's very strange. Yeah, they have three other kids. 
Like we're on the show all the time for the first like 15 years. And like the daughter, I feel like the daughter is like a doctor or something. She's like oh, a real she, success. Yeah, she wants no part of it. Huh? And, yeah, I mean, I don't blame her for that. No, no. I mean, yeah, I, that's a good move, though. You're right. Karen brought the booze in, loosened Chris up a little bit. And Amy, though, Amy right away shot that down. Like, this is not going to happen. Uh, but I don't, is it because it's free? Like, why is Chris so excited about that? Chris loves Matt, but I don't know. loves him. It's also weird. I mean, Chris still isn't in the house with Amy. Uh, very strange. Good, excellent. Excellent point. Very, very, very. It's the kind of thing that, again, fits the Chris profile, right? Like, he is not moving in that house. Exactly. I don't know if you watch Dexter, but that yeah, was I a watch big it. thing. Dexter wouldn't move, wouldn't move in with Rita. And I'm what happened? Same vibe. What happened to Rita? Oh, she got killed. See? Could happen. Be a great season finale. I'm not rooting for Amy Roloff to be killed, but, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, I, 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 I'm I, not. Uh, do we know are Matt's parents still alive? I like Matt's dad. I believe they are. Oh, good. Okay, I like him. They're old now. Jesus. Yeah, her. Hmm. I think her dad is alive, plus the mom. Or no, her dad's dead. Her dad's dead. dead. Yeah, she went back and had her. Uh, she went back to like her old high school and stuff. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I, yeah, I'm, I am, I am eagerly waiting to see what happens this season. The Chris storyline to me is one of the great storylines in television right now. No problem. I agree. I'll talk to you in a few weeks. Sir. Excellent. All right. See you. 617, you're up. Am I the only one that thinks this uh, almost breakdown of Steve's is going to end up in a sequel to Natural Born Killers? Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Hello. Eight, six, farewell, seven. my baby. Farewell, my honey. Farewell, my <laughs> Stevie Pie. We'll miss you forever. This is goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Is that Copper Doodle or no? I believe that was Copper Doodle, yeah. I heard from him lately. Uh, all right, hello. Hi, Kirk. Hey, uh, I just want to say uh, I'm going to really miss Steve. I really enjoyed his contributions to the show, and especially to the case, which, uh, you know, 11, 35, 25 minutes till the hour when the case drops. Uh, I just wanted to point out on well, the Julie Picaro well, 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 on Monday. Well, not today, but yeah. I'm sorry, uh, um, on Monday. Uh, on Monday, uh, Julie Picaro sound, uh-huh. <clears throat> there was a big miss. By you guys. Oh well, please, please film if me. If you here. remember, if you remember, Julie DeCaro, cis woman, um, did in fact say that Tim carried his parents up on her on their offer. So what she's saying is that it's okay for and perpetuate the the uh, the idea that it's okay for parents to utilize their daughter as chattel and to and to uh, sell them off to uh, to the most uh, promising breeder. Mm, interesting. Good point. Good point. I wasn't listening, but an excellent point. Hello. Hello, Kurt. Yeah. Hey, this is uh, Harry Stamper. I understand uh, Steve wanted to meet me. <laughs> you want to meet with Harry Stamper? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Just well, the, I mean, uh, I think you're a fan of Steve. Do you know what that is or no? I don't think I know who Harry Stamper is. You know who Harry Stamper is? Is he related to Doug Stamper? I... I- no, Steve, I, I piloted a uh, rocket ship up to an asteroid about 25 years ago. What the hell? Does he have any of these talking about? Oh, oh it's roughly, yeah, the size of, roughly the yeah. size of Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, Steve. Jeez. Go ahead, Harry. How are you? Doing great. Steve, sorry to see you go. Thanks. Thanks, Harry. That was nice of him. Well, Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, I just, just called in. He said he wanted to meet us here. That's it. You can't, you can't board much. Harry Stamper, Steve. I'm not going to board him. Right. Well, thank you. And what happens when the next asteroid's coming? It's a good point. What a plot for a, what a, plot for a film. 978. Oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm still so depressed. This is terrible. Steve, you're the greatest. I have a quick question for you. Yeah, what's up? At the end of your sabbatical, hypothetically, say one Ben Shapiro called up and Ooh. said, Ooh. Uh, hey, Steve, we want to uh, you know, extend an invitation for you to be a producer on the Daily Wire show. Would that tickle your asshole a little bit, or would you just, are you just stepping away from the game for sure? Uh, I mean, it'd definitely, be, it'd definitely be an intriguing offer, but I'd probably want to lean more towards like writing and stuff. Like the thing about producing is you're constantly concerned with making someone else happy rather than like doing your own best work and what you find to be like truly fulfilling. And so the the producing role is something I think I'm just like um down on. 
But I'm sure Ben's great to work with. I would probably. I, I probably, well, I'm not saying just Ben Shapiro. I'm just saying Daily Wire in general. But um, it, it, it seemed like that would, I don't know, it would be something that. All right, your, your, your background noise is annoying. Thank you. All right, we got, we got your point. We got your point. Steve is not closing the door on working for uh, conservative radio or, or podcasting again. I'm never going to work in radio. Never? Never. I'll okay. never work in radio again. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Hello. One or two more. 508, you're up. Hey, Kirk. Hello? So called Steve Austin. Oh, wow. I mean, all right. Is Blind Mike there? Yes, he is. All right. I want to open up a can of whoop ass, but I'm scared he's going to eat it. Now I feel like stupid about doing it. That's that's all Steve has. <laughs> it's a little low energy. These all days. right. Uh, oh. 843, you're up. Hey, Steve. What's up? Can I get a uh, bit only show just from the soundboard one of the last shows? Can you get a what? Can you what? Just a bunch of bits like, oh, I don't know. Am I stupid for doing this? All right, goodbye. Uh, uh, shut up. I'm going to dance for you. Go away. Jesus. To an entire show with drops. <laughs> That'd be a good show. <clears throat> 413, you're up. Hey, Big Steve. Were you really pushed out by Rico? I'll hang up and listen. Well, we addressed that earlier, Steve. Is there anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, no. 404, you're up. Steve, I'm going to finish. Uh, just one question. Is the wife better than you at Dagger Carcass? Oh, I'm do- dominant. I'm dominant. It's going to be quite a battle over the next few months. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I am I am dominant. I think I'm, I mean, I've probably won 99.99999%. Of all bagger carcass race, uh, matches, I've beaten you. I was talking about with my wife. Oh, okay, and you cheated. I've never lost to you. So I yeah. j- jumped out of a moving car and sought a shouted bag to stop the game. <clears throat> all right, hello. Add on to that question. Oh, sorry, buddy. Four four zero. Hello. Hello. Hello, Stephen. Stephen. Yep. Yep, what's up? How <laughs> you see how he's writing you see how he's writing about Bill Gates and the combat zone today? Oh really? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Tales from Boston shut up. Ta- Tales from Boston's combat zone when Bill Gates was in town. <laughs> I'd he heard was- that he used to he uh, there's like a book that was that came out in the nineties that showed yeah. that he, he loved going around picking up strippers. So it turns out that Bill Gates is from Howie, the Uber geek multi billionaire founder of Microsoft was a uh was a fan of the old combat zone back in the nineteen seventies. He was cutting classes at Harvard and taking the red line over to the city and wandering dingy, triple X-rated lower Washington Street. Jeez. Hmm. Yeah, Bill Gates, <laughs> it turns out, was uh, an Epstein guy. Oh, yeah, you think? <laughs> Led to the fucking divorce. Huh. All right, go ahead. Hello, Stephen. This is your lover from high school. No, we haven't heard for, uh, from her in a while. Stephen. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm glad to hear you're still I alive. Just want to say I'm so thrilled with the news. You're happy that Steve's leaving the show. Well, I heard about your new baby. I am because to be able to spend time with his son. We just bought AR 15s for daddy and son. I'm so excited to be right. traveling. Yeah, here to Maine. All right. Hello. 203, you're up. Hey, Steve. Um,. I'm devastated. I'm going to miss you so much. I have a completely unrelated question. Um, this podcast, I'm listening to the producers leaving. So I'm now joining team cancel culture and I'm going to try and make sure every producer that fills his seat gets fired. Um, so I was wondering if you guys had any investigative tips on maybe how to like, I don't know, find people's addresses or, you know, things of that nature. I know you guys have done so well in the case. I wonder if you could give me any tips on how to sort of ruin someone's life. Uh, what podcast is this? Um, it's uh, it's the Rich Mandarin show. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, um, but his his producer is leaving, and it's it's oh, devastating right? me. Oh, so now I want to make sure every <clears throat> next producer gets <clears throat> fired. Oh, oh, oh. One or two more. We'll get out of here. Hello. 
All right, uh, so, Steve, I called last week or the week before, and you gave me a no comment. Now with all this, you leaving. I need the fucking answer. Is that your dog, Ziggy, that you gave back to the goddamn shelter? No, that actually isn't my dog, but it's one of uh, Ziggy's brothers. Another family adopted uh, a dog from the same litter, from the same shelter, and independently of us, named it Ziggy, but they did they did return it. Yeah. That was crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. That's well, go very to, circumstantial. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe in quick. I can I can prove it. I mean, I've got I can like tweet out a picture of my dog later today. I would never give my dog back. I've heard of the dog in phone calls. The dog's around. Okay, I don't care. I don't care that much. Right. One, 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 maybe one. Let's get a good one to wrap things up. Four hundred one. You're up, Steve. Uh, I, I consider myself a big Rabbit fan. Very caught off guard by your lack of caring. That you, you're just going to quit your job like this? It's it's hard for me to understand. I mean, how how should I have uh, done it? I think people would like. I think there's a natural. So, hold on, hold, I, hold, I, hold, I hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on for a second. I do think the people who listen to the show every day would like. Maybe you're thinking, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like you're particularly connected to the show. You don't. You're, you seem like you don't care that much. Or you're leaving it. I mean, which like, is okay. I'm just I saying. Guess, I think I that's their how I, that's a reaction. I'm just saying. But I guess, like, what? I mean, how do how do you demonstrate that you that that's not the case? I don't know. But I'm just saying. I, like, I think they were like, oh, this is sort of a, you know, eh, you like I'm leaving the show. Whatever. I don't like the show anymore. I'm out of here. I mean, I just. It's not that I don't. I you guess, said that. You said yeah, that. yeah. But I, it's more that I I don't like the anxiety that I get. I don't like how doing the show makes me feel. I don't like its impact on my life. That's all. Okay. And it has nothing to do with like the minifans or social media or whatever. Like 99% of the minifans are great. It's like, it's, it's a me thing. And I just like, I need to need to do something different. Does that satisfy you uh, caller or no? I totally, I, uh, I guess so. But I like, I, I come from, you know, I'm a hard worker. I, I see myself like Steve. I just don't how, get how he could not, want to be working hard and, you know, providing for his family, things like that. Well, if he doesn't want to do the He's a hard worker, I, I can't if, see him, you know, quit job and not working. If he doesn't want to do the show, I've said this 50 That's times. Why do you want him to like, you don't understand why he doesn't want to do the show. He doesn't want to do the show. You know, no, I get, he doesn't want to do the show. I just don't get how his mindset, he could not, he could just, he's only what, what in your thirties, Steve. Uh, yeah. Early thirties. Well, he's not retiring. I mean, you know, well, it just—I mean, at, at this young age, it's it's hard to see somebody uh, with such talent, you know, give up on uh, with what? good work. What talent. It's just—it's just an extended oh, vacation, I, man. Yeah, he doesn't want to do the show. He, he's an, he's anxious. Clearly, okay. I've made him anxious, and he, he wants to move on and do something else. He's going to start his own business. That's okay. Uh, we also will support it. Yeah, I uh, I wish him the best, and uh, thank you for all uh, your hard work for the last couple of years. You're welcome. Hello. 413, you're up. Hey, Steve? Yeah. All right, Steve. Um, a couple uh, questions for Steve. So a couple months ago, I sent you some 3D Doritos, and then I saw you tweet that they were no good. He didn't like disgusting. He did, the they were disgusting. Doritos. He didn't like disgusting. Them. He didn't like disgusting. Them. disgusting. I'm saying disgusting. it's bizarre. It's disgusting. He was not. Well, you compared it to uh, Bugles, not the original recipe. Those, I, weren't, those weren't 3D Doritos. I actually like Bugles. You didn't like Bugles? No, no. I'm not sure if that's confirmed. No. What's that? Steve, I don't think that's confirmed that it's not the original recipe. It's I think not. your uh, it's taste not. buds have changed no, over the years. No, 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 no. You, that's you, possible, you, too. You, no, you remember what childhood tastes like. It does taste different than you've had in a while, though. There's truth in that. Whoa. Go ahead. Okay. My childhood tastes like your... You, uh, I was going to say, my childhood tastes like your mother. Okay. All right. You got me. You stuttered over that one, and you, you went back to it? Okay. I don't want anything about that guy. All right, hello. 774. Steve, do you go up to the barber and say, Steve, do you go up to the barber and say, paint me the New York City skyline right on my forehead? It's more of a Lloyd Christmas look. <laughs> it definitely is. All right, good call. We'll end there. All right, they load up, Craig. Ah, they are loaded up. Now right, let's take some calls. You're on with uh, Craig uh, and Mike Geary. The BMP boys, they call us. Yes. Do they? What's up, Kirk? Sure. What's up? Um, 
I was listening to uh, the Case podcast, and, and I had Thank to laugh you. because there was one point where you know Kevin Miller was uh, you, you were interviewing him, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I'm on uh, Riz Riz," and I thought I seriously thought you were going to be like, "Oh, me too. I know it well." And I was just fucking dying at it. We're good. Thank you. I know what he's talking about. <laughs> he's on what? I have um, no idea. Um, he's talking about the Italian, the uh, you know, what, I think I don't know. I was on res. I couldn't understand. What I don't said. know. I'm sorry. I didn't get to hear it. All right. Go ahead, Craig. We'll take a few more. Seven, seven, four. That's a good start. Seven, seven, four. Hello. Yes. Uh, I was calling to defend myself. This is the underwear guy. The underwear. I, don't I don't even know what remember. that is. This is Christian from beyond average. I don't know what that is either. Oh, I know what it is. What is it? He's underwear. You made fun of the podcast when you were doing, going through the resumes. When, what, like a year ago? What are you talking about? No, no, no. When you were going through resumes with Steve. Oh, oh, okay. All right, okay. And this got you, are, you wear underwear? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, well, one, sometimes I do. Okay. But when I choose to fall, I do it with clean pants. I mean, is that that crazy? I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll film yeah, the guys, guys, Yeah, go ahead. If I may. Go ahead. Go ahead. So... You played sound of this guy's podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And What's it called? Promote your. You can promote your podcast. It's okay, buddy. Beyond average podcast. Beyond you average podcast. Of- What's that? Yeah. And he went into some. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean interrupts. Go ahead. <laughs> he went into some rant about uh, how he wears underwear every other day. Oh, or yeah, like he's that. a crazy one. Yes. Yeah, the other guy was a straight. Li- yes, and yes, I yes. I believe that provoked you to say, don't people know there's a skill to what I do? Yes. <laughs> I'm not mistaken. Well, yes, I, yeah, I was not I was not overwhelmed, but I appreciate you. You So you want to defend your underwear wearing process? Go ahead. Well, I feel like I feel like Steve was under the impression that I wear the same two pairs of underwear uh-huh. all week, seven days okay. a week. Okay. Well, your issue sounds like it's with Steve. I'm really glad you're getting to the bottom of this. It sounds like it's, your issue sounds like it's more with Steve than me, no? Well, I think it's just, I just wanted to clarify after. Sure. I don't know how many people, you know. I, I mean, like that he's not saying, hey, you guys took my to... podcast out of context. It's a lot better than that. He's saying, no, no, no. They misunderstood <laughs> well, how often I wear, change my underwear. <laughs> well, okay. Well, there you go. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Good luck with your podcast. Beyond Average Podcast. And, uh. What's it called? Just one of the guys? What the hell's Craig's podcast called? Oh, a uh, very good show. Very good show. <laughs> Just one of the guys. I don't know. Very good show. <laughs> that would be, I would like that name better. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> both great. All right. Hello. How many more of these podcasts can I promote? Jesus. Patreon.com slash buy Mike. Thank you. Yes. yes. Really? Hello. Six hey, Craig, five. can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Great. Uh, I just have a question for you. I'm just wondering with the whole Steve thing, if you have any regrets of how you handled it, it kind of seems like you're a little bit of an asshole. In what way? Go ahead. Well, the whole, you know, obviously I'm not privy to everything, but the whole, the whole core thing, telling him he's irreplaceable or replaceable, and it's just, I don't know. The whole what thing? If someone that you work for. The core thing? You said? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The, repla- the cord, like give me the cord and call them replaceable. Like if that's an employee well, he, that you want to keep. Well, he is, but I mean, he's, like he is, shit. but he is replaceable. Like we're replacing with Dave Colony. But, but I mean, I think you're, you're, I mean, there are times like that, sure. But if you're me and it affected the sound of the show the next day and Steve is in his pajamas at six o'clock at night when he should be out getting the cord, to me, he's not doing his job. And I'd say the percentage of the show that I did stuff to him like that was less than a half of 1%. I also think you praised Steve more than <clears throat> Way any. more. Way more. Way like more. You would go out Steve, of your way to be like, but he deserved a great job. It. He, he, did, he did a great job. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, that's not false praise. He did a great job. I'm telling you, uh, caller, what's your name? Uh, Jared. Jared, I am blameless in this issue. Zero percent. I will take zero percent blame. So you don't think calling no. an employee that you uh, you you said great job, you like them, you know whatnot, but when you treat someone like that, I don't know, as an as someone who would be an employee, you would think, oh, why do I do you deal with this shit? I don't think Steve was abused. No, it's 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 also on the air, like you know. Like, I didn't yell at him in the fucking hotel lobby. When on the show the next day, we talk about stuff like that. And the example you're bringing up is also <laughs> after he quit. No, it's not. Isn't it? No, he's talking about the hotel in South Carolina. Was, oh, yeah, oh yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. no, it's just a good example. But I, I don't. Yeah, no, no. I just don't. Yeah, I I, I, under, I guess I understand what you're saying. Uh, But no, I, I feel like I treated Steve great. Pay them great. Treat them great. They have as much vacation as he wanted. Praise them up and down. And he didn't want to do the show anymore. It's not a big deal. He just didn't want to do the show anymore. Do you think you'll have him in at some point? No, I think a, I'd say I probably. Think a good conversation. I'd say probably not. Hello. 
Hey, Kirk, how's it going? Uh, it's going fine, thank you. Good. I'm actually getting married in a week, June 5th. Any word of advice? What day of the week is that? Saturday? Saturday. I guess it would be. It's a week before Madawaska. No math. <clears throat> where, where are you having it? Uh, it's going to be up in Ipswich. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, uh, were, were you going on your honeymoon somewhere after or no? I'm going to Hawaii. It's going to be a big golf trip. Oh, Hawaii. that's a long flight. Yeah, yeah. a very long trip. golf trip. With, cl- with clubs? 12. What does that have to do with anything? No, with clubs. I'm not. <laughs> Craig thinks he's flying on, <laughs> with them on his back. It's like a play on the plane, Craig. <laughs> with clubs. You just, just check lot, them in. It's a lot to bring. You check them in and you pick them up and you're off the plane. Folks, takeoff's going to be a little delayed. We're trying to fit these clubs in the air. <laughs> bring clothes, too? <laughs> A selfish passenger brought his golf clubs. <laughs> his clubs? Looking for a spot for his driver. That unusual trip to Hawaii, you bring your golf clubs. <laughs> well, good luck, man. I don't know. Good luck with that. Still load up, Craig? They load it up. All right. 774. You don't need hey, a lot from the class. Remember... <laughs> True. Do you remember when you made Mike cry on air because Mima got breast cancer? I do remember that. <laughs> I don't remember much about the show, but I remember that. <laughs> In that episode... You mm-hmm. also found out that Steve cried when he left the Harry Carr show. Oh, is that true? I think you need to. <laughs> yes, I think you need to bring him into the studio for maybe an hour and just see if you can get him to cry if he cared enough about the mini fans. I don't think he cares. Good don't... point. The mini fans. <clears throat> mini fans. I, I don't think he cares about <laughs> mini the... fans. I don't think he cares about the fans. Like you know, I'm not saying that even like he just doesn't care about the fans. It's not even a, a, a criticism. It's just how he's wired. I did like that as oh, much as Steve made it. fun of me I for that. Think it would be fun to make I cried about my grandmother getting breast cancer. He left the Howie Carr I know. show. <laughs> he left a shitty AM show and cried about it. I think that show meant more to him than this show. All right, hello. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Question for you Who do you think would win in a street brawl? Phil Collins or Peter Gabriel? Well, Phil Collins is, is in a wheelchair now. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. But he is. He actually is in a wheelchair. I was thinking of pummeling him. When he's yeah, in that's what I mean. Like Peter Gabriel, <laughs> right? Answer. Peter Gabriel will win, I think, right now. Like, are you saying in their pro- both that's in their prime? Know. We could go in their prime. I feel like Phil Collins being a drummer has got more of a burly. Upper yeah, I pick Phil Collins in this prime. Peter Gabriel, Gabriel seems Gabriel seems soft to me. I take Phil Collins in this prime. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good enough. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Thank you. Are they loaded up, Craig? They loaded up. All right. Seven, eight, one. Hey, Kirk, uh, so I'm going to read an Instagram caption for you, okay. and I hope that inspires you. Sure. Continue to keep caring about changing our country and society for the better, even when it's not convenient for you. This isn't a fad. Hashtag BLM. Who do you think wrote that? Mm, Steve Robinson. Ellie Schnitt. That would be Henry Hank Lockwood <laughs> from June 10th, 2020. <laughs> How many posts do you think he's posted about BLM since then? Well, I've noticed that the girls on that show have gone back to lots of... I checked this last night because I, I thought we'd have a real conversation about Rhea and Fran. They were very into it. And now it seems like they're more into photographs of themselves and, you know, their house or something like that. Yeah, they moved away from caring about Black well, that's Lives that's what the show Matter. was before. So I thought they evolved yes. to yeah. the other I thing. guess not. Yeah, I, I guess realize. not. I would say zero posts since then? Correct. It's almost as if when he's telling people that this isn't a fad for him. Yes. It wasn't <laughs> very so, strange. Sir, I don't know where you're jumping yeah, to that. Very conclusion. strange. What are you doing on the case season two? Just a, just a typical, you know, again, just a liberal douche. You won't admit it, but it's fine. 610. Hey, Kirk, it's little people. Hello. It's being silenced. Your phone is not good. Oh, hold on. This is a little people, big world guy. Give him time. Yeah. Hello. Kirk. Uh, Where no, are no, you? Sir. Put him on hold. I want to talk to this Go guy. Go outside. Put him on hold. We're putting you on hold. Go we're giving you a better line. We'll talk to you. This is important. I want to talk about little people, big world. It now, is very important. Can we take now another call while, these while we put him on hold, <laughs> hold or no? No. We'll find out here, won't we? <laughs> Craig's head just explodes. <laughs> he looks a little tense. <laughs> it's really okay, Craig. It doesn't work out. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hello. Is, all right. My guy? Yeah, can you hear me? This is terrible. My dogs are barking now. I like I'm sprinting together. <laughs> Kirk. Well, I mean, we need. Uh, there's only one thing I want to talk about right now. That's Chris last night. That is really disturbing. I mean, I feel he was put under a lot of pressure. It's not fair. He's being forced into a lot of things. He's just trying to live his life. 
Yes. And yes, he there's is. There's boxes in his way. He doesn't, not fair. But he doesn't want to move in. He's got his own little bachelor pad. You know what's going on. And Amy, Amy's blind to it. But I'm, I'm so team Chris on this. What is he supposed to do? There's no fucking room. And, and she's got them friends over all the time. Oh. What's going on? Those friends just come over and all they do is talk about Amy. They're, those friends must be like, enough. Fucking enough. Jesus. I think they're I think they're plants. I don't think they're actually no one could be a real friend. <laughs> it's over, true. Right? I don't know who'd be friends with her. It's a good point. Well, any other takeaways from last night? Uh, no, I mean honestly, it was kind of boring. The second episode was really boring. It was good you were on vacation. Nothing really of Oh, terrible, terrible uh, episode. Yeah. I mean, you Matt know swimming in the pool there. Still got the shoes on for you. Yeah. I, oh. I think that was a little nod just for you. I saw Tori with her big uh uh big feet flopping around last night at that house. They're all fucking barefoot all the time. Jesus Christ. Now that like Amy's officially gone, Tori has officially filled the Amy role. Oh. She's just the most annoying person. She is alpha. She is alpha up though, and her and Karen are just shit talking Amy basically behind her, behind her back the whole time was very entertaining. And Karen and like and Karen, Karen, Karen is a very, very, very uh, expanded role this year. Well, again, Amy's gone, so she wants to be part of it now. But Karen, I feel, is like a genuine person. Yeah, she seems alright. Their heart to heart. I don't. I don't know about. I don't know about the other one. No, I agree. I agree. All right. Thanks for the recap. Go back to your dogs. No problem. Talk to you next week. See you, buddy. What I like about that show and like all like reality shows like that. It's like we pretend to be like accepting of everyone, and then we have a whole genre of television. Where oh, like, just, look at them. They, they put, living regular lives. They put together like a night. It's, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. That's all it is. Like They don't do right. anything interesting. They just happen to be short. Any of those, like 16 right. and pregnant or whatever. Like, it's just like, That's look it. at these people just living. Gawk. Yeah. Just dance for us. Uh, uh, Steve finally tweeted. What did oh, he tweet? What did he say? Uh, it was uh, nothing oh. mean or anything, but it says, At Kirkman did a fantastic job investigating the disappearance of Jennifer Faye. I was there with a microphone and sometimes a sidearm. Everyone should give it a listen. It's the best true crime podcast. Hmm. That rat. I really, <laughs> I really enjoyed making my contributions to the Case Podcast. It was a brilliant idea, and I think we executed it well, but it wouldn't have happened though. Kirkman's tireless work ethic and dedication to the truth and the victims' families. Two guys passive-aggressively compliment <laughs> each other. <laughs> they did a great job again. And, uh, he did a great job. Two guys quietly seething with anger and resentment. I have none. I actually have none. <laughs> you're, not, you're not hurt by this at all? No. Hello. Hey, Thank question for you. How do you feel if Big Steve became the new program director for WEI? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. He'd fit right we could stick to the socks today. Well, Steve's big, Steve's big thing has always been that he would just go uh, all national radio at that point. Yeah, I'm hearing my birds are saying that uh, Orway's going to be retiring soon. Really? Yeah. yeah. Boy, another fucking <laughs> seventy. Well, Orway's got to be in the seventies by now, right? All right, goodbye. All right, go ahead. Six one seven. Hey, Kirk. Yep. Hello. Yo, Kirk, I was curious. What is your knowledge on 90s indie movies? How uh, well-versed are you? Pretty good. Pretty good, I think. Pretty good. Wes Anderson? Yep, very, very much so. I saw Bottle Rocket in the movie theater. West, uh, West Newton Cinema. I watched Bottle Rocket the other day. I loved, loved it. it. Loved it. It's my I favorite, it's my favorite Wes Anderson great. movie by a mile. Is it the Wilson Brothers? Yep, yeah. yep, yep. It's great. It's, you, know the best, you know the best guy in the whole movie is? The guy who plays Bob Maplethorpe. He's fucking great. Oh, yeah, and uh, I was actually curious about that. The Wilson brothers, I thought, were unreal in that. They played great roles together. Mm -hmm. Who were the best celebrity siblings in movies all time? Oh, I'm happy to answer that. Thank you for the call. <clears throat> hmm. um, the Baldwins. I mean, I, I think Jeff and Bo Bridges are both really good actors. Obviously, Jeff Bridges is better and more famous, but right. that's a good acting team. Uh, are they I'm, movies to What's that? They were in the Fabulous Baker Boys, which is a great movie uh, with Michelle Pfeiffer. <clears throat> That's definitely worth seeing. Um, I don't the know Afflecks. The Afflecks, both of Oscar winners, are yeah. obviously were together in a, you know, Ben directed them a couple of times and they were in a pretty famous movie together. You have to put them up there. Uh, I mean, I don't know. What's funny is like, obviously, you, you think of other things now, but. You know, Randy Quaid was in a lot of good movies. Oh, yeah. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, right. Like, you wouldn't think of them, right? Like, right. you know, for me growing up, I would think of them. Yeah. You know, you think of Dennis and, and they have no relationship. I don't know if, I guess maybe they were in the Big Easy together, but they didn't act together a lot. I feel like I'm forgetting, am I forgetting some obvious? Charlie Sheen, Emilio Estevez. Yeah, you have that too, for sure. 
Matt and Kevin Dillon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, like Wahlberg's brother obviously is not. Right. Yeah, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. But yeah, I would say for me, I guess I go with the Bridges, I guess. I mean, forget, Craig, you're looking it up. What do you got? Any other ones? Uh, no, I just got a uh, tweet sent to me by Justin. I was just reading it. Okay. You just said, nope, not looking it up. <laughs> go ahead. This could be it if it's a good one. This hey, could Kirk, be it. Uh, what do you think you're going to miss most about Steve? I uh, feel like he kind of got buried on the last show. And, uh, <clears> with, uh, I got a lot like of people. A lot of people shine. said compliment that. sandwich. A lot <laughs> today. You compliment. <laughs> a lot of people said that that was a burial the other day. I swear to God, I didn't feel that way. I, I'm, I'm. I just did not think. think uh, Mutt called me. He's like, that was. A, he's like, I sat in the car and that was an old, good old fashioned capital B burial from Kirk Minahan. It's like I loved it. I was like, really? <laughs> doing the work of like three people and wanted to be like compensated and congratulated for that. I would say a burial in the athlete. sense that you were, it seemed like you were moving on and were, there was more not anger, but uh, disappointment, I guess, than no, you, well, showed, yeah. well, I just kinda, than you showed the previous Friday. I, I just kind of laid it out. I mean, he did do the work of a couple of people, but like during the case, but I'm like, dur- like he was not putting in 40 hours, 40 hour weeks during the Kirk Minahan show. I'm just being honest here. And I'm fine with that. I don't, it's not a job that, that, that needs that. You know How what I mean? How many culinates do you need to hire to uh, do this, get the same amount of utility for the show? Oh, I am so culinate out already. <laughs> I'm so done. Like, I don't, I don't. But you knew that would be the case. Oh, he's tweeting about bullshit and just this endless crap. And like, he's so stupid. None of it is entertaining. I'm, I'm like, why? <laughs> Yesterday I was getting tagged in some, like, uh, people making, like, someone made, like, some joke about me. And I was like, oh, what's the origin of this? And I said, it's culinate. Right. <laughs> just him tweeting yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm just... I'm going to say what Steve, like, the matter of fact, like, <clears throat> I remember one time he said, we were, we were talking about something, and we were talking about Elizabeth Warren, and he's like, I forget what he said, he's like, he could, if I lined them up and I blindfolded them, he could smell what they smell like, <laughs> but he wasn't joking, you know, like, cat lady. Yeah, was, cat, right, yeah, 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 something, yeah, <laughs> but he's not, he wasn't joking at all, or like, right. or like when they get mad about teachers, yeah. like, stuff like that just, is just funny, and like, <laughs> and like, he worked in a job where... You know, I find that stuff funny listening to conservative radio. Like he was saying the same same stuff. Yeah. On another show, but there was nobody was laughing at it. But then he kind of understood that it was funny. Exactly. Yeah. You don't hear those guys make fun no, of themselves. No, ever. and they should. I, right. I, but maybe they shouldn't because the audience they're going to doesn't want to hear that. Yeah, they're this respected <clears throat> voice. That was my all time favorite line on the show when he said, "I guess there's twice as many uh, kids at the school, so maybe they're wearing double the mask. I don't care if you put fifty masks on them as long as they get out of the house." Who said that? Pretty good. You did. All right, goodbye. I don't fucking care. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I do think... What the fuck is he talking about? 